question has been asked to me, is Real Animator Training Library the real deal? Is that Real Animator Training real? Absolutely. The Real Animator Training uh, provided by AMB Animation, um, it is absolutely the best ever, ever. Is Real Animator's Training for real? Yes, yes it is. Where have I been learning animation? Well, the Real Animator Training Library. And there's so many videos in the library that you could learn forever. I'm just so happy with the way that I've progressed since I've started in the AMB Animation Library. I am a post-production artist. I'm also a member of the AMB Real Animator Training Library. Is AMB's Real Animator Training for real? I definitely have to say I think it is. Uh, I've been to art school for four years um, and I've never had any lesson that was as good as the ones that AMB gave me. AMB animation can be a life changer. It certainly was for me. I totally love it. Uh, that's what I have to say. That's the way I have to say that I love it because I must admit that at first I didn't trust it too much. I never thought that would make that difference in my life. So I went ahead and hopped on into the library and that library is just so valuable, so many things you can learn and every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. I bought this in support because it has changed my life and you know everyone's lives are being changed by, by this and the, you know, this experience has been great. It's just truly amazing. I may have said that already. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been one of the best things that's happened in my life. Is Real Animation Training Library real? It doesn't get realer. Thanks. So, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, so this is it. It is Monday morning here in uh, New Zealand, but still Sunday in most of the rest of the world, which means that uh, Sunday is the day that we look at all of your work in the growth, development, and progress real animator community on Facebook so we'll be uh, it's a stream of two halves as you know the first half of the stream I like to share some uh, drawing uh, draftsmanship uh, skills with you um, you'll see there's a suggestion from the man Cameron uh, but you can all add your suggestions you just suggest to me uh, an animated character that you like pre uh, preferably one that's uh, from a 2d hand-drawn background and uh, I will uh, Google it and make a study of it and uh, tell you the things I see and learn as I do that um, and share with you hand-eye coordination, construction tips and things like that. So please feel free to make your uh, suggestions in the chat as I uh, go over to the chat and say hello to the people who are in there. So um, Cameron's already got a suggestion. So if nobody else has one, we'll just do that. But while I'm saying hello, there's not going to be many hellos. Uh, if you're online, give your suggestion. Okay, so we have got Cameron Allen Davidson Black. How are you, sir? Hope you are doing well. You have suggested uh, the coachman from Pinocchio. Um, no, I haven't done him before. Uh, he reminds me very much of that scene in Beauty and the Beast where Gaston and uh, LeFou are asking uh, him to pay the um, to pay the asylum man. Very similar homage to that, but the coachman is a lot fatter. Um, Copper Star, there you are, shining, amazing. Um, Kitty Cat. How are you, the adorable Kitchikat Villa Art? Can you do a short animation of one of your characters like Jin? 
that's a great uh, thing a suggestion villa arts but it's I, i'm not going to do an animation uh at the moment because we're, this stream is all about looking at other people's animation and helping them and offering them some suggestions and advice as to how they could improve their things uh this year is all about the ground hopper sooner or later you will see me animating one of those characters um soon enough um okay so we have no further suggestions of uh character breakdowns so let's just jump in and do the coachman from pinocchio thank you for that cameron Pinocchio, P I N O double C H I O. Oh, yeah, I just had to remember the spelling. <laughs> uh, Pinocchio, Coachman. Coachman. Yeah, you little brats. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, he's a very old school character. This film was released in uh, around about 19, after 1940. Um, so he's very old school. So I'm going to find one which is. That's a nice image of him, actually. That's a strong image. Let's do that one. Um, that's a full-on image. Uh, okay. Now oh, it hasn't let me download it, that one. Damn it. Um, I don't know why it has to... Just bear with me for a second. Yeah, I hate it when it does that. This thing cannot be downloaded properly. It's a shame because uh, it's he's got his hands. I might have to use two images to make this one image. This is the best image I can find of him on Google. Um, He's very rubber hose in places, which is not a bad thing, but I really like this image, so I'm wanting to do this one. Um, all right, let's 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 do it this way. Um, I'm gonna save this image, and I'm gonna use this one to zoom into him, and I'm gonna use the other one to just get his silhouette right. Okay let's do that right um, thank you Villa Arts thank you very much okay let me now change my screens hopefully you'll be able to hear me as we proceed now to do the study of the coachman from Pinocchio right so um, let me just double check my mic's working yes it is all right let me turn my laptop to me it's a very small image on the google search window but let's do it this way right so the silhouette is just let's move it further back so let's get a big fat brush when we deal with the silhouette and then we're going to break it down so I'm going to start with a shape like this, right? Um, that's the shape I'm going to start with when I'm building his silhouette. Now I'm going to build, put a little triangle in here and I'm going to put this shape down here like that. Now I'm going to curl here. We're going to see where all these things kind of match and add up. I'm going to curl here. I'm going to curl. So we have got a big shape hair like this with some other kind of shapes coming in now here I've got this triangle here so I'm gonna come around here with a round shape it's almost like a it's almost like a little kind of jug like this right so we'll see this film is like almost 1940s like 1950 1940s this film was released okay and we can see that even you know then this this was still very much the the order of the day so if it ain't broke don't fix it right everything was about silhouettes now there's something in his hand where i'm gonna rely on the uh, this is the one that i'm gonna have to look at i can't quite make out what's in his hand i think it's a whip 
Yeah, I think he's holding a whip. It's very small, very difficult for me to see. It's dark, but I'm going to put that in there right now. Right, let's start breaking these shapes down and talking construction. So in line with his hand here, that's where his kind of head lines up, which is going to be in this shape here like this, coming here like that. And we're going to have his, uh, his nose up here okay his eye line is in in line with his nose and his eye is here like this and his mouth comes somewhere here like this right and we've got his other head now I'm gonna use my other drawing of him now because I can look I can change it actually the he's he's more in profile here but I'm in, in the close-up where I can see what see his face clearly He's a little bit more um, three-quarter, which is actually nicer, right? So let's talk about the guy's face, right? Actually, I'm, I'm making a drawing out of two drawings. So in this one, his face is hidden behind his shoulder, but I'm adjusting it. I'm changing it. To, I'm changing faces, right? So we get more of a three-quarter face. So that's his silhouette. Now I'm just going to draw. Okay, let's talk construction. Um, let's make this yellow. So let me bring my brush size down a tad and we'll talk construction. So what we want to think about is we want to think about his eye line, right? And his eye, he's got one eye here. He's got one eye shape in the middle and another eye shape here like this. Now we're going to put his eyebrow in there. We don't really see his other eyebrow and that's going to give us almost the width of another eye, his eyebrow almost comes around there. It's really simple when you think about it as measuring eyes, all right? Now, in, in between, we've got a round, a rounded nose, just an oval kind of shape like that. Right? Very old school character. His head's almost like a teapot. So his foremouth comes off from there, and we're going to come around here like this. And we're going to unify everything with a big kind of cheek like that, right? Now, this is very important. Before I continue, let me just draw his um, his mouth shape as this triangle, like very old school mouth shape here with just three kind of teeth like there, um, like that, right? Um, so... Before I continue, I'm going to talk about this, right? Because this is essentially what, what it all is, right? The nasal area, the eye sockets, the maxilla, the zygomatic bone, the frontal bone, right? And the zygomatic bone, right? Coming all the way here. So even these early characters, now he's got a massive jaw, right? So his jaw is, is, is doing something like this, right? So even these really early rubbery um, 1940s cartoon characters uh, from the Disney studios, before they got more and more into structure of the face, because this guy's face... I mean, I love Pinocchio. I think it's a masterpiece and it's one of the greatest animated films of all time. Uh, so I hesitate to make this comment because it could be seen as something like breaking it down. But it was an early, they were finding themselves. So many of these human humanoid characters, including Geppetto and uh, the coachman, were a little bit le lacking in structure and more like the sort of Mickey Mouses. They were using those rounded uh, aspects and facial features would sometimes wander a little across the faces and all that. Not because these guys weren't capable. It's Don't forget, these are the pioneers of the craft. It's because of them I have the skills I have now. And it's because of them... James Baxter has the skills he has now. It's because of them that anime people have the skills now, or whoever the best is at that, right? These were the pioneers of the what I call the secret science of shape simplification 
working out structure and construction in the characters. So looking at this guy is very interesting to me because what it does is it, it, it puts everything into perspective that you can see that even early on when they hadn't quite got the structure that they were getting in their later films, um, you can really see this that, that, that it's still there. Everything is still is still there. Right, so I'm gonna clean his face up a little bit, but I'm just detailing it in because it is quite simple. So now his hair is gonna be like a straight line coming across here, right? And we're gonna give it like two bumps like that. Now on these two bumps, again, you see all the little formulas to keep consistency. It's all all hair, right? So these guys knew what they were doing very much. And as I said, Pinocchio is Pinocchio actually has some of the best character animation I've personally ever seen in it. I, I think the uh, Jiminy Cricket by Ward Kimball is just outstanding piece of acting. Uh, for those of you who are interested in watching the craft at its highest um, level, and we're talking acting that wasn't generic. If you turn on a Pixar movie today or any kind of movie today, all of the characters kind of go through the same sort of routine when they're depressed. And it's funny because I watch people filming themselves as live action when they're trying to act out their reference and suddenly their acting becomes like they're acting like one of those generic uh, Pixar characters even when they're doing the live action motion. It's like that's in their head. My character acts like a generic typical he'll drop his head and lower his shoulders and shake his head as if no 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 and his uh you know it's but what you see when um you look at these early actings like the scene i'm going to talk to you now like jiminy cricket um when they're in pleasure island and the guy Lampwick is impressing Pinocchio the guy, when, when they turn into jackasses, you know. I think that social comment is quite, could be quite, um, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything, no. Okay, I'll, I'll hold myself. Um, so, um, so basically, uh, when, um, when this happens, uh, Jiminy Cricket wants to have a boxing match. He wants to have a fight with the young boy and he's calling him a hoodlum and all this and that. And it's such a genuine piece of acting. It looks, it's only that character has ever done that. It's not even like, you could say that Baloo had his typical sort of acting uh, that that Milk Carl would reuse in um, in Robin Hood and things like that. And it was a, it, you know, the, the kind of scratching of the back of the neck and all that. I love it, but... But what Jiminy Cricket had in Pinocchio was something that only you will only ever see there. It was so unique to the character. It was just, and it worked perfectly with the voice and and everything. It was just just marvelous stuff, and that's that's why I consider it um, animation and acting at its uh, at its highest level. It's so pure. All right, so. This scarf kind of like echoes the shape of his chin. Okay, we got a right angle here, a right angle here. Okay, although it's very round. Okay, you can see where the kind of if 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 you more like the structured curved straight style that you know the Europeans brought to Disney. Um, well, Milk Carl did it, but it was very influenced by a lot of European cartooning and art. So this kind of thing is very much hair. So now he's got his uh, elbow, which is a round shape like this. This comes around in it. And I'm going to change my silhouette slightly because I'm, I'm on a different drawing. I'm referring to a different drawing. But he's got his fist, which again is just a simple shape like this. And they're gonna make a square like that and curl it round where we're gonna cut into that. And the way they give this guy's knuckles dimension is they're not gonna do this, which is what later happened. They're just gonna put little kind of forks in his knuckle there like that. 
So that's how, the, and then the three, one, two, three on his glove there like that. So he's got a big kind of glove there. And now his, uh, his arm is coming over like that. Then on this side, I'm going to have to use, go back to the other drawing in a minute, okay, to get his sleeve right there. So this, I'm just trying to see how to explain this. This comes in and through. It's, it's just how his jacket is done up. I can't really explain that, to be honest with you. It just comes in and through and he's got his his back here. I've had to change, slightly change his uh, perspectives from my silhouette because uh, we're using two different poses so I could have a clear look at his face, right? So again, here, you want to think of these like a square, okay, to keep the consistency. So more, if you're animating that, you're going to animate like a square, right? You, whenever you, you don't have to do a square on every frame, but on your keys and extremes, you'll treat this like a square. So if he was going to be, I don't know, if he was going to be looking here and his hands were out like this, right? And I wanted to, I wanted to get that right. He had his, let me just make up a pose from what I've done at the moment, right? Right. So he would be something like this I would imagine right if I was making up a pose of him now so if I would I would put a square here and I would say okay one two and they kind of in the width of his face three four but then you'd think about the contouring of the the character and, and all that right so that's kind of um, something you can do uh, to get that consistent in there now I'm gonna have to look at the other drawing that it didn't allow me to save and I'm gonna have to really I'm gonna lean into my screen because it's really small it's really small we've got the glove which comes down like this and it's gonna come out of the back there now I wonder in the other image his other glove didn't have this but it's there so I've got a wow why wasn't that in the other image right it's from the same scene maybe the animator forgot to draw that in sometimes that used to happen in the older movies because not because it was a mistake well it was a mistake but let me tell you okay they not only had to clean these guys up in pencil they then had to give it to an inker who would trace it with ink on clear acetate from a cleanup. So the animator would animate it in rough. Then it would go into cleanup with a clean pencil line. And then after the clean pencil line, no coloring it from there with a computer, right? It would have to be traced again with ink on clear acetate. So there was a lot of, you know, they had checkers back in the day. People who would check every frame. But even with that, you'd still um, you'd still have uh, problems uh, occurring like disappearing things it happens because of the amount of uh, so that's something which is a little less now and a little a little easier to fix in this day and age can't quite make out the bottom of that guy's whip so I'm just gonna do something like this um, and there's a little mark here and we're gonna rotate this so yeah i've worked it it's funny because i on my first job working on this project called mill times uh for pbs you can google it and watch it if you want there's an animated section i was in my early 20s probably 2021 20, um i was an animator on that and i was i was shocked to see that my work would be given to this person called the checker who would check for any holes in the lines and then close the holes in the line so that when they scanned it for digitizing uh, it would be easier and quicker to color okay so that is the coachman I'm gonna as I'm doing the coachman I'm gonna tidy this drawing up a little bit uh, so let me see if there's a question while I'm tracing this drawing just giving it a finer line 
let me see if there's a question. It just gives me a, a chance to answer some of your questions if you have, have any. So if you have any questions for me right now, let me see. Hervonia Baker, you are online. Um, Kevin Silver, how are you doing? Octavio Velasquez, Red Fox, people are all joining in now. Um, bum, bum, bum. Square pants. It's the coachman's the world's nicest guy ever. Okay, well, um, I'll give you just a little bit more time to ask me a question before I go back and trace this. But I'll say to Hervonia, Hervonia, I got your message asking me to, to help you with that drawing. I was going to do it online today, but that drawing said that I had to notify the people if I was going to use that image. And I don't want to be, I don't want to do all that. So... Um, if you have an image that's truly free on Google that has no notifying for copyright use or that, then I'll be more than happy to break that one down for you. Okay, so nobody has uh, asked a question. I'm going to just talk about cleaning up his face a little bit and um, let's get through it. It'll be a, probably about a five, ten minute job and then we'll start looking at your work. Um, okay, so let me uh, tidy this guy's face up. Okay, so I'm going to use black. I'm, I think I'll use the, the 10. I'm going to zoom into his. What do you think about Bridgman, the real deal? Question mark. Okay, Bridgman, you're talking about the anatomy. Uh, let me first look at this guy's eyes, okay, because eyes are everything. I've zoomed right into the image that I'm referring to. Even though this is a cartoon image, I never take eyes lightly because the eyes are what they call the windows to the soul. And every time I draw a character, I really, really pay attention to the eyes, you know, which is another reason why I really have a dis dislike for the digital puppetry of today because they're using pre-built eyes um, where it's from a library of eye shapes and when you draw the eye you're really drawing what you're feeling and that's an opportunity for a real artist to try to communicate right so as I'm as I'm making this, like, drawing here of this guy's facial features and his eye in particular, I'm slowing myself right down, right? And I'm taking a little bit of time, and I advise everybody to do this because it's really quite a ethereal, magical experience because if you think about what you're doing, you're trying to go back in time and converse with the soul of the person that drew this expression, right? Because every time you draw, unless you're just uh, some kid who's got a, a hard-on for Japanese anime and you're just trying to draw, copy and draw that because that's all you want to do with your life in that particular moment in time, um, you're basically, every time you draw a facial feature, you're trying to, which is why people often say that you're drawing yourself. You're literally trying to put something into that face that's in, in you, that's going on through your mind, right? And that's the beauty of when, when a skilled uh, animator, somebody who can draw and animate really well, the illusion of life, is doing these things, right? They're really, really, now I'll start using sweeping lines because I'm less concerned, right? You see, I'm less concerned with what I'm absorbing. So I'll start using more kind of what the lines that illustrators think are so good, right? Just one line, right? Again. These people don't understand what animators, real animators, are all about. Getting inside the illusion 
of a character is my uh, personality expressing. So when I draw eyes, that's what I'm really trying to do. I'm trying to get inside the guy's mind who drew this to say that, okay, you're drawing a villainous guy, especially with Disney animation, because proper Disney animation, not the, not, not the garbage that uh, where, uh, you know, that's inflicted on us today. But back in the day when they really, really were pioneering and trying to be the uh, the best, and it was all about the drawing, right? Now trying to be the best is how m economically efficient you're going to churn the stuff out, how, you know, how, how advanced is the technology to make it just quick, easy, fast, right? But back, back then they they had the best artists, really trying to say something with when they drew really like trying to like it's it would be like people mock it like drama drama students and things where they go i'm not feeling it i'm not feeling it but it's true it's like you draw an expression and the director will go i'm not feeling the villainy i'm not feeling the villainy so it's very very important right so now i've done that i'm just gonna uh, burn through the rest of this and somebody asked me a question about Bridgman. Look, I don't know too much about Bridgman. I've never really bothered looking at what he has to say. Uh, so he may be very, he may very well be the real deal. Um, but he's not the only way, right? I've never, I've never really looked at his books. I've never read what he's had to say and my anatomy is just fine in fact my anatomy is better than a lot of people that teach anatomy in art schools and whatnot online um, so it doesn't the thing is is um, you got to understand that when it comes to learning something like human anatomy right and drawing and draftsmanship you're basically in search for the truth and the truth is that you're you know you have a human body of your own you know the human body and the resources and information out there that ha that you have for the human body today okay in a world that has gone beyond sitting down with a book at your drawing table and looking at the book okay um the amount of resources is almost limitless okay almost limitless you could literally you know, you have animators filming themselves with their iPhone nowadays, right? For reference, you know. Sadly, they they've got that part right, but sadly, they're behaving like pre-existing generic Pixar characters when they're when they're acting. But that's on their performance. That's not on on the process of, you know, the limitless process of having the the resources. Why I'm talking about that is is. If you wanna, if you wanna know what I'm saying about this Pixar business, I'm not picking on Pixar. Go to Instagram and look for John Pomeroy. Okay, look for him right now. If you've got your iPhone, look for John Pomeroy right now. John Pomeroy was uh, an animator at Disney, and he w he went to work with Don Bluth and was Bluth's main animator. He did most of the Dragon's Lair stuff. Right, he's a, one of the best in the world. A tremendous respect and love for this guy now the thing about john pomeroy is is he all he he returned to disney and he did something called milo thatch for atlantis a character called milo thatch for atlantis and he is i didn't comment i don't comment on john's stuff i just appreciate it okay but i almost typed a comment and i said no i'm not going to do that um, nobody asked for my opinion. Nobody asked for my advice. It's John's space. I'm not going to come on his space and start preaching. But his post inspired me so much that I almost did. Um, 
He posted a video that he did uh, filmed of himself acting for a scene of Milo Thatch, right? And it was brilliant, okay? A brilliant example of what I'm talking about because his acting that he did was very like, you look at him, he's kind of like, he obviously isn't much of a live action actor, right? He was kind of understated. He was a little bit um, awkward and he was just trying to get a feel for what he wanted Milo to be saying and doing. He didn't look like the end result, basically. It didn't look... It, you could see the bone, bare bones of what he was doing, but his end result looked like amazing acting. And his reference, which was himself, was was basically lacking in all the appeal that he put in to his performance. So why am I... What, what, what am I where am I going with this? I'll tell you where I'm going with it. The thing is, is what do I often say, you often hear me say, is two of the most, um, let me, I'll, okay, okay, um, I've kind of, I want to know what the back of his scarf looks like. That's what it looks like, okay. So, two of the most underappreciated law, uh, laws of the 12 laws of animation, and I've often, I've been saying this in, in some recent streams of mine, is appeal and exaggeration okay appeal and exaggeration people think they people like uh, grow up with those words and they think well i know what appeal is and i know what exaggeration is so those are two laws that i think get kind of overlooked people assume that oh yeah i know what that is right but they don't really know how to do it and when you look at john john pomroy's acting of uh, milo thatch when he was filming himself for reference he knew what he wanted he knew what he was trying to say but his his performance as a human being was was not great you know but he knew what he wanted he knew what he wanted and he wanted to look at those how the body moves and what the body does he wanted to really try and get into his character's head which is what i was saying earlier about genuine performance that only that character would do no one else right genuine acting uh making the character more believable so then john goes away um and does his scene with his character looking at his reference and it is just outstanding it is amazing like the suddenly like all of the poses that he was doing himself are like full of you know dynamism and angles and you know just drawn so you know additional head shaking you know uh really you know arcs leading into other arcs anticipations subtle anticipations before anticipations just magnificent uh milo thatch has got some of the best um animation of recent times uh that i've seen personally in terms of the um, character performance and acting and I thought to myself this is it this is the real way to work with reference of yourself when you're animating now my LinkedIn profile has got dozens of people posting their CG animations and then Every time I see it, it's all works. It all moves. Uh, let me see if it has got these buttons have got. Um, yes, they have. Um, so it all it all works. It all has um, arcing and flow and whatever. So these guys know the laws of animation and they know what they're doing. And there's nothing wrong with it. But it's everything does the same movement. Every acting is looks the same. Every little head wiggle and you know this is how somebody depressed acts anim in an animated movie. This is how somebody 
overexcited acts in an animated movie. They they burst their lips together and their cheeks bust and they blink and they're busting with excitement and they clench their fists and their little fists tremble and shake as if they're containing it all. So typical, like every bloody character in today's animated movies kind of do this. And then they go, and here's the live action that I filmed so I could get it just right. And they did, they did. They, it almost looks exactly like their live action performance, which is, so they did a great job in that regard. They used their reference and they did a great job. But here's the thing. Their live action performance was as if they suddenly stopped being a human being for a moment when they wanted reference. And they started thinking to themselves, I'm going to get into character. So when they try to get into character, they don't really, in my opinion look like they've got into the true character of what that uh, character they're animating is uh, because the character they're animating is basically gonna have something of them in them but it's like they've taken the thing of them out and they have said okay I'm gonna try and act my best like a Pixar a generic Pixar character would and I'm gonna film myself doing that and that's it that that that's my performance and um and it's sad because these people actually you know they have skills they have abilities and i'm pretty sure that they could knock out some amazing acting if they if they really thought about it but i just think they're kind of in a loop of thinking well that's how animated characters act and we don't really have any genuine performances. Many, many. I mean, I was watching How to Train Your Dragon 2 uh, with my wife. And also there's this thing called Rise of the Guardians, um, which is full of a lot of generic bad acting as well. But there's a couple of scenes in there which just blew me away where I said, wow, that animator really did something special there. That's That's... That's something else. That's not the typical stuff that I see in these movies. So it is there. It is there. But it's, you know, it's like it's like a, going through a watching an animated movie is like going through a TikTok or a Facebook feed for me where the majority of it is is, is just uh, samey, samey trash. You know, everyone's using the same piece of music to try and get, you know, everything so similar, although it it's different it's also similar so so the thing is is about the bridgman comment look use whatever helps you whatever you think helps you but there's many resources and for me personally um okay that works in advert in inverse um i would i wouldn't necessarily refer to another artist's drawing to learn anatomy okay I would rather, here's where I would rather use a computer because at the end of the day, whether the computer model is not 100% accurate, I'm telling you now, Mr. Bridgman's drawings aren't 100% accurate either, not even Raphael or Leonardo da Vinci or whoever, but the computer will give you a three-dimensional rotation of the entire skeleton or an isolated bone where you can study that bone and your shape yourself. You can study the muscle attachments yourself. So I haven't read any... Bridgman or any anatomy book, but I can sit here right now and I can draw a scapula for you, right? Like this. And then I can tell you how this part of the scapula is very important as we draw the humerus bone, because that's also where your del where your biceps is going to be attached to, right? And around here, your deltoid is gonna come your front deltoid. Then on this side is also where your clavicle is, right? And your trapezius goes around the back here, all right? The front delt also connects to that, right? So origin and insertion points. So here's the thing. I would say that Ken Hub, okay, or Anatomy Zone, or these doctors and scientists, for me, their information is better than any artist's information, okay? Because what do, what do I want to do? I want to know the anatomy, right? I want to know the anatomy. 
I want to know the origin, the insertion point, okay? So if I sit here and say, well, this is the cervical vertebrae, the atlas bone is here, the C1 is here, then we've got seven of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, before leading into there, right? So then I'll say by the third and fourth bone, we got a hyoid bone here, right? So now that hyoid bone is connected to these things called the digastric muscle, which comes back up here, the double-bellied muscle. The mylohyoid comes here. Now this is called the mandibular triangle of the chin, which is where the upper jaw is going to be here, right? And then here's your thyroid, okay? So then you're suddenly going to have along here things called the... Um, sterno which is your sternum your sternothyroid okay and your sterno your sternohyoid because it connects to this bone here then you've got on the side here your omohyoid which comes out on this side as well right and then on here you'll have um other muscles your sterno again sterno connecting to the sternum and the and the uh, clavicle okay and the also the subclavian so sternocleidomastoid right coming here your trapezius which comes around here to the back of the occipital so what am i what am i showing you here anatomy now i can get this from no art book right you can get that from any art book back in the day my anatomy was good but it was nothing compared to what it is now right um, I know these muscles and I know them far better now because of the scientific information available to me. Art is also a science. What is science? I believe it's a Latin word, seance, to know, okay? To know how, right? So all of these, I would not go to an artist book to understand anatomy personally, right? I would either like that's why I recommend my real animated training is because I've understood all this and I've and I've simplified it for you but if you're in search for the truth on your own and you're willing to take a longer than using my shortcuts in the uh, training library there are no shortcuts but I've kind of tried my best to give you them um, is First, you need to know anatomy. Where, where, why, where would I listen to an artist then? Because everybody's got something to share. Well, I would listen to an artist when he talks about simplifying shapes, right? Simplifying these shapes. So when every time I draw, I'm not going to be drawing uh, those anatomical features in everything. But then you're like, okay, well, let's simplify that. Let's have the uh, mylohyoid hair, right? Let's simplify that as we're kind of drawing. Let's use that angle of the mandible. Let's understand the thyroid, the which I mentioned here, and the hyoid bone. Okay, let's then simplify these shapes, right? Where we're going to start being able to... So that's where I'd start listening to an artist okay uh to get tips on how to represent anatomy right so in 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 a way so here you see i know that this is the orbicularis oris right so that's what forms this line here which goes in with the cheek right so the thing is artists can help you with gesture and line and looking at their way of simplifying but if you don't know what you're simplifying right so if you don't know that this is the thoracic spine this is the lumbar spine right and then the pelvis the false pelvis starts here so the waist is actually going to go a lot further down right the second here because the greater trochanter comes out here right then you're going to be able to get unless you know what you're simplifying right so the scapula the latissimus okay so this is this so let's unless you know what you're simplifying it's not really going to help you that much right so again 
the bone, right? The Achilles tendon. I find my point, right? So the whole aspect of, again, Achilles tendon, I'll find that for the foot, right? The Achilles tendon will help me find my foot, right? As I make this pose up. Right, which is a then you can think about putting things in diamonds and shapes and whatever so again here again i could observe but because i know the scapula the scapula is going to be doing this so the latissimus is going to be out like that right then this arm is going to be up here now i can think about the wrist bending with the if she's playing with her hair right so this one is going to be more, let's play with this. Let's bring the scapula more out this way, right? So this one is going to be more like that, right? So then again, here you want to play with the hand shapes, playing with the hair, right? So then again, here, trapezius, what's the trapezius doing, right? Trapezius is going to go all the way here, right? So the angle of the occipital. So unless you know all this, the way you draw the figure is not really going to... Um, looks odd as I started piecing it in. It's not really going to, um, to help. So um, about Bridge, Bridgman... Um, Basically, Basically, don't cons it's like a finger. Bridgman is like a finger pointing away to the moon, okay? But you want to look at the light of the moon. You don't want to concentrate on the finger or you'll miss all that heavenly glory. As the great Bruce Lee once said in one of his movies. Um, okay, right. The next half of the stream, we're going to look at people's work. So we had a nice little bit of drawing and discussion on the first half of the stream. Uh, the new OBS update is confusing me a little bit, but it's everything should be okay. So let's see what people are just talking about a little bit as I before I go and look at your work. So if there's any more little bits of uh, user questions, or I can I can answer. Um, about anatomy studies okay that's that's uh, that's a question if there are muscles that lie too deep with for you to see should you still study them um, at your stage Hung Ming Hui no okay you've barely gotten used to the bones and I think you've gotten so into all this anatomy studies that you're not doing any animation uh, so don't expect to be a good animator at uh, Hung Ming Hui if you're because I've noticed you've You've jumped on the anatomy parade. There's nothing wrong with it. You're being super focused on that. You've jumped into muscles, which we haven't started even. Uh, and But that's what you want to do. That's great. But your animation is not really going to happen if, if you don't start using it. It's like dry land swimming. You can practice the stroke of the swimming, but if you don't jump in and, and use it, it's nothing's going to happen. So that's one thing to uh, hide... I personally do. Uh, if you look at my anatomy book here, you'll see that I'm covering muscles that aren't even superficial muscles. Um, I may not teach these muscles to you, but what have we got here? We've got, I'm working on quadratus lumborum, iliacus. These are all muscles inside the, where are we? Here we go deep hip muscles hip flexors and things like that that i'm working on so here we've got the iliacus the psoas major the iliopsoas which come together to the femur bone here and you have the iliacus which is inside the hip um which forms the iliopsoas abductor abductor magnus abductor brevis abductor longus and all that a lot of these quadratus lumborum, okay, which sticks on your false ribs coming down to the lumbar 
section of the pelvis quadratus lumborum so I personally learn it because I think knowledge applied knowledge is power knowledge is not power when you just know it and you don't apply it I do apply it I understand it I think it's important to know that stuff but if you've just if you're at a beginner intermediate level uh, I wouldn't even call you intermediate uh, but you you're kind of jumping into this I, I think Hung Ming Hui it's good what you're doing but don't force things okay you can overload yourself with information uh, but you're gonna have to do this for the rest of your life you're not gonna get it and go I've done it and now that's it it's not a test in school the school edu education system is bullshit in my opinion this isn't a test in school where you pass your test I'm drawing anatomy I'm in my I'm 44 now and I'm still making anatomy books like this. Notice, I ain't looking at any Bridgman. I'm looking at the science. I can draw. I don't need him to. I don't need to look at his drawings to help me with my drawings. Thank you very much. I can draw. I've got all the information that I need from these uh, CG models or uh illustrations scientific illustrations that's uh, that uh, that's the real information i need to need i don't need another artist's ego or whatever trying to tell tell me like fine other artists put themselves in a box and say i'm an artist so i'm gonna look at an artist's way i say i'm an artist i know what i can do and i need some good information i need to know about origin and insertion points I need to understand the body so I can draw it properly and express it my way, no one else's way, okay? Um, I look to people I admire and carry some of their expression. I'm not trying to say that I'm some original, only only the my original way, but this is, we're learning anatomy here. So, so I would say at your early stage, be careful. Um, I would just learn the superficial muscles for now. Okay. Um, I find it harder to draw other people's drawings than from life sometimes. That's because when you're drawing from life, you have to settle for what you have to settle for it. It's a lot harder drawing from life because you, you have to settle for it and you got to step away. When you're drawing from a photo, the reason you feel you're finding it harder is because you go into what we call perfectionist mentality which means that you've got or you feel you've got more time and then you keep finding errors and then you keep examining and analyzing more and that's it so um it's just a different approach but uh, drawing from life is infinitely harder because um you only get one chance uh, bum, 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 bum repetition is the key yes that's right i can't feel a person when i draw them that bugs me um that's okay silver sun you, you you're not as i said this is you're not there yet to worry about that the thing is it's like you're acquiring abilities and you're developing your skills it's like you're trying to you're trying to speak to me in Indian. I can't even speak Indian myself, but it's my native, my parents' tongue. Okay, you're trying to speak to me in Indian language. You, 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 you've listened to like a cup. Uh, you've been studying it for a year or two years or and a day. You, 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 you can say you can string a sentence together, but you can't start giving me poetry, right? You can't start giving me in like sophisticated combinations you can just say the basic things so when when i'm talking about this the getting into the eyes and the expressions of a character that's taking this to a whole whole new depth level deep level of sophistication which is what real animation is about right it's about getting your basics intermediate advanced down so you can start exploring that right so 
Don't worry about these things. Have expectations of yourself, but never worry about when they arrive or how they're going to get there. Because the minute you do that, you, you freeze yourself from progressing. You're like, I'm going to do this thing, but until I see myself doing that thing, I won't be able to do it. Well, just sit there and wait then. Because where's your mind when you're doing the thing? Your mind is as, oh, I don't see it yet, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm frustrated. And then your attitude takes you in a different direction. If you're like, well, I'm doing that thing. Okay, that's that one done. Okay. A year passes where you're just doing the thing. You don't even feel like a year has passed because you're just having too much fun doing the thing. And then before, before you know it or not, you'll look back at your work and say, holy crap, that's great. Right? But you got to change your mindset first for that. Um... Milo is amazing, yes. Ba -ba -bum. Did the great one have a loved one get killed? Ooh, I'm glad that you're seeing it's something far more nasty, Silver Sun. People are gonna be, people are gonna really, um, People are going to see why he's called the Great One. Um, I remember drawing all those angles. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I hate it when my mouse stops rolling as I'm scrolling the comments. I have to use the slider. Um, Charlene, how are you doing? Um, My pleasure, Le Lebzor. Thank you, Charlene Giles. Um, what the whole pose of that, him, the, the latest pose was, is, is that's kind of like a story sketch of when he hears somebody has disrupted his, his uh, contemplation in his cave. <clears throat> um, definitely going to check out Ken Hub and Anatomy Zone. Yeah, Hervonia, uh, you're studying them from the anatomy library, but uh, so the anatomy library is basically better for you than those because I've taken those and explained them to you in an easier way, but you should still check them out if you're hungry, okay? But don't get carried away with the perfectionist mentality. Go through the anatomy archive. You're you're somebody who I don't need to sell to. You've bought it. You've bought into the training. So you know, you, you, you're, it's like you're being guided by me in that archive. Here's what I got from those places, various my various resources, and I'm giving you the best explanation that I've got from that. Um, but at the same time, when you do the micro studies, which is the ones that I, I'm telling you, to do in the archive where I say, look, I'm going to do about five, but you should be doing 20, 50, or however many, right? Uh, and this is how you do it. I just go to those images like the Gen Hub or the the ones that have the clearest. A lot of these are what I've got from drawn, drawn from here. A lot of these um, I've taken from Google from the Gen Hub and uh, the Anatomy Zone. I've been... I do Google search. I take them from there because that helps me. But remember, uh, Hervonia, one thing real animator training gives you that they can never give you is, is you're drawing 3D turnarounds of those bones to understand them. So just drawing the flat. Remember, this is my pre preparing to train you in anatomy muscles. Just drawing the flat thing is not going to help you visualize that muscle in three dimensions. Okay, so that's where I'm... I'm not saying this to say that I'm better than you. It's just I'm just more experienced. OK, so um, it's I'm giving you my experience. I'm saying, OK, well, I can draw something from a flat thing and understand it because I've spent years researching it. But if you were going to copy a flat picture and try to understand it, that's why I built that archive, because I'm like, OK, this is the macro shape for you to understand what this thing looks like in 3D using simple shapes. Right using your so you can get your head around the weird shape of the pelvis the, how they all form the acetabulum drawing those flat images of the pelvis for example from 
again hard bore an hour whatever not really going to help you as much unless you can visualize that shape in three dimensions um I will be able to do animate. I don't think I'll really learn if I don't do it with a. Oh, you're doing it with a mouse. Uh, yeah, no, you you do don't don't do it with a mouse. Never do it with a mouse. Get yourself a tablet, Hung Ming Hui. Get yourself um, get, even if it's a high or a I don't don't know what they're pronounced. Huon or whatever, or a cheaper one than a Wacom. It's uh, get yourself one. AMB, after five years or so of being, I finally joined your Facebook. I don't deal with Facebook, but the only reason I made was to join your group. Fantastic. We've got a lot of people doing that. <laughs> Fantastic Studio Anima. Um, I can't even do that in English. There you go, Silver Sun. Um, ba -ba -bum. I'll have to look for that Pomroy post. He posted it just the other day. It was outstanding. It, it illustrates everything I say about the law of appeal and the law of exaggeration. You can see John Pomroy's personal trying to act it out with the stats. He knows what he wants, but it doesn't come across on camera. But that doesn't matter to anybody else. He can see the gestures and things that he needs to see. And then, bang! Use his forte, which is drawing and animation, to give you something just so amazing that it just, you look at that character and it's like, wow. Um, yes, I used to use Google. Um, anatomy, muscles and bones, AMV stands. AMV can stand for so many things. Um, Okay, we have reached the end of the uh, chat. Um, and now that means it's now one hour, six minutes in. It means it's your time. It means it's time to go into the Real Animator community on Facebook. The global face, Facebook community and see what you guys have been posting. Particularly the training library members. Uh, and we're going to have a look at your hard work. So let's do that now. Let's, let's put, put on, on the, the double, double mic. mic. Uh, let's get rid of me. Let's bring it on. Okay. Um, here we go into the global Facebook community. Very quickly, this group is open for everybody to join. You do not have to be a Real Animator Training Library member. In fact, if you join this group and go to Featured, you can have access to nine free training videos from the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. It's very easy. You read this description here. You simply copy this passcode. You click on this. You'll be taken to a private showcase. You paste that in, right? And there you go, Real Animator Training Preliminaries. Uh, basically, nine, you got nine free lectures. Uh, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lectures from the training library and two from the edutainment archives. Uh, so you got the basic bouncing ball, the basic swinging pendulum, the legs and hips of the walk cycle, the bones of the foot, the bones of the hand, uh, two different ways of drawing. So this talks about visualizing the three dimension. Anybody interested in anatomy, this video is great because kind of is a video that will show you all the things I was telling you about what I did. Hopefully it doesn't. Hello, hello and okay, welcome. Okay, so you can see the... So here you can see me explaining the bones to you. And then what you do is, is you start to draw a simple triangle shape and you do a turnaround of that triangle shape, which is hair and that turn around what you start to do is learn all the various bones as you start doing a turnaround of this and then you learn how to do a turnaround of the foot with all the various bones in the foot so that's why hervonia it's so important that you stick to this archive if you have access to it and use the ken hub and all that as supplementary stuff when i was talking about ken hub and anatomy zone it was more so for people who don't have access 
to the Real Animator Training Library Anatomy Archives. Um, so that's just one of the free videos you get there, probably better than most anatomy videos you're ever going to experience, and it's my free gift to you. So go and check this out, nine free videos for you in this group. Okay, so now um, we are going to go into the discussion <coughs> and have a look at the posts and see who I can help uh, or not. Curtis is uh, trying to work with um, something that uh, her, Selena Nina did in her own personal exercises. Curtis hasn't actually gone in and learned from the intermediate archives yet, but one thing that would help him is if he uh, if he understood in the on the basics archives when he was learning from the training library. He's now ventured out to do his own things. I wish him the best in that. But we focused on this pelvic box, right? So again, one thing that will help him get the bird's legs right is to think of the pelvis, how the pelvis would rotate and, and all that. It, that's probably more important than getting the volumes right and using the, the shift and trace or the cutout methods or whatever to... To keep everything the same size if he didn't then that's impressive but I think one of the things that his hair is we don't really see it looks quite robotic because we don't really see um, any hip action and these legs are kind of cut out in that way so that would help him to remember about the pelvic box and and have fun deforming this body rather than worrying about keeping it solid okay so Alex is doing uh, more of his bone studies, which I'm just going to let him go with that. Again, Alex, it's it's not so important that you get um, the it's it's not so important that you get all the twelve, all the five vertebrae in here and all the twelve vertebrae in here and all the seven. You can do that sometimes when you want to do a labored pose. What's more important is is that you you get the the angle. So let's, is it an up angle? So what, what, these would be turning. And then you may want to say, is he turning his head, right? So what's happening to the spinous process, right? So is the spinous process gradually doing that, right? So these are the more important things for you to consider, right? So then if that's the, this is where the thoracic is going to be. So the thoracic will be here, right so these are the more important things for you to consider this pelvis would be more rotated sorry this is more rotating this way and this is rotating this way you see um, so these are the more important aspects for you to consider when doing these drawings rather than because what happens is, is you get this flat effect in the spine yes you're consolidating but remember also um, also, what we teach, you go and learn the shape of each vertebrae. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to go and draw every vertebrae, but we got to remember that the lumbar vertebrae are a lot bigger, okay? And the thoracic vertebrae are going to be... Notice I'm trying to follow the contouring. See, I'm not caring about have I drawn 12, okay? Uh, I know there's 12, I know there's 5, I know there's 7. You can go back and do that sometimes when you want to test yourself. But again, here I want to think about the, the size of these vertebrae, right? And the angles of these vertebrae to suggest to me what the body's doing, how the spine's working, right? So it's good that you're doing this, but at the same time, don't just make it like a habit okay if this boxer is hunched over i'm gonna make up a boxer's pose here because i can't be bothered to look back and forth so let's say that this boxer is hunching his scapula is up here right his biceps or you know let's say his his arm is here right and he's his head's like this right and he's like that right so I'm not going to just draw straight lines like that, right? you got to understand that hair would be the occipital, right? 
So actually, I'm going to kind of figure this out, right? So C7 would be about here where the tra trapezius is, but you haven't learned trapezius yet. So but C7 would be here, C C1 is here, cervical 1, cervical 7, okay? So then you think, well, his head's turning this way from the atlas. So these are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I made it, right? So then I'm, you got all of this. Now this is going to be coming here, right? So where his pelvis is here. So the lumbar section is going to be, the sacrum is going to be around about here, right? So, so I'll be thinking, okay, well, we have the thoracic, which is here. So this is going to be turning to three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know I said don't do it. Nine, ten, eleven. Okay, we'll we'll do that there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. Right. So I know I said don't do it, but I'm kind of like having fun now. So I'm illustrating my point of trying to right. So the lumbar is going to be bigger. Two, three, four, five. Now we have the uh, acetabulum of the sacrum, the coccyx, this, the ischism coming here like this. So we have something like this, right? Again, ain't no Bridgman being used here, right? Just personal investigation. So here we can see where okay so the other scapula is going to be if he's hunched over this scapula is actually coming around but then it's also a little bit back on itself right and then this one will be probably doing the same thing if his deltoids here right which is where his humerus bone is and his ulna bone is here where is his own number? Is his little finger will be here? So his radius is just going to be here like that. Pinky and thumb helps you with that, right? So then again, here you're going to have maybe he's going to be having his arm up by his face here. So we won't really see that. So maybe the scapula would be more turned over here like this. It's tempting to do that, but he's not martial arts. He's boxing. He's going to be more closed like this, right? So, um, rib cage, okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay. So then the floating ribs are going to be kind of here, all right. Then we've got the other ones all kind of fused together in here, which I'm not really going to, we're going to be coming out. Remember that they come out from the spine like that, all right. So that kind of like, again, here the occipital portion of the skull come around here like this to the mastoid process. So I'm just giving you a reminder because you've got the anatomy archive and you're following it. But what happens is, oh, I've got my great one open. I don't know. What happens is, what am I looking for there? is you start to fall into the habits of doing this. And this is where you move away from what, what is being told for you to do. The archive is telling you to do repetition, but then you, you start to draw the outline of the figure, but you don't, um, you don't really try to explore what's going on with the bones. You can see here the spine is really working in this drawing. And the scapula is really working. I'm not just drawing an, an outline of a figure. I made this up, all right? But I would do this if, if I was doing what you were doing, looking at references and whatever, right? So I would, I would draw the outline of the figure, but then I would really try to... Okay, what's the direction? Because this is how you're going to get dimension. You're going to get structural, structural dimension into your drawing. By, by always remembering that, okay? See, you've been posting these drawings for the past m couple of months. And while you're showing improvement in, in solid shapes and things, the improvement could be more effective 
if you were to not just turn this into a habitual routine of that's the spine, it's got this many things, and that's where the humerus is, and that's where the scapula is, because if you're doing that, it's not going to grow. It's like, okay, that's there, that's there, I know that's there, and that's what it is, and now I'll just draw the, the next one. So take the time to really try to understand. The same for you, Kevin Silver. Okay. Um, okay, so is that the same, Alex? Yes, it is. Yay! He started doing his animations of the basics again. Here's my attempt to at the standard walk. I feel like I know body mechanics with my poses. Well, your poses, are, you're just following the basics poses. So don't... don't uh, take any personal uh uh thing for that it's not particularly um it's a simple stick man so it's not going to be so exciting this looks good to me the body looks a little long in comparison to the legs but we don't really care about that um it looks to me like you you've got the the pelvis and the torso are countering yeah Just be mindful here. We don't want to care about volumes, but just be mindful of the the bending of the knee. Is it's all good? I guess he's just got thicker in his leg and thinner. Now look at where the knee, how long this limb is, and how short the limb is. So you're not really bringing that knee up enough right because you've made you've almost you haven't made it this bad right but his his knee is his femur bone is growing in length okay and when you animate it it'll work it'll look good uh, because you're following the poses and things but can you see how his femur is growing and his tibia is shrinking and here the, oh man, and here the, so here it comes down. They're both a nice length there. The knees at a nice bend there with the tibia. But look at the other leg, how short the tibia is. Okay. Now the tibia and the knee are more or less the right length. Okay. Now they're the right length, the right length, the right length. Here they straighten up. They straighten up. Now here's where it starts to get a little bit off now the tibia is way too short okay and what's what's causing that is again many people get thrown off by this is the hip box okay so the hip box is is angling this way so people think oh well i want it to kind of fit hair like this because his foot's hair so you just have to bend this knee a little bit more right because it can only go where the hip box is, right? So maybe you look at yours and you say, well, my knee is not as, his his knee isn't as bent as my knee. Well, maybe you raise your hip box a little bit. So when it does that off the ground, that's why you need to think about these poses a little bit, right? So when it does that off the ground, it'll be a little bit more like that. And then you've got your two lines, remember, so it's not all on one line. So um, so there's that for you to consider. Um, overall, when you do it, it'll work. But we're not supposed to care too much about volumes at this point. But the thing is, we don't, we don't, this, the legs are very important because the legs is walking, right? The walking actually occurs from the hips. He uses his legs to balance and stand upright, and and that's where um, we want we don't want any awkwardness. As I can see it, if if you do it all, it'll all kind of work and it'll be fluid and your arcs are all right. But I can tell that that's going to happen. It's going to be some strange sizing going on there. Um, Mage Burger, the body of the trot, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something wrong off with the front legs. Uh, so Mage is doing a, the quadruped trot from the intermediate archive. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. It just feels like he's kind of going back on himself 
first I'm going to look at the rear legs, right? Okay, well, already I see the problem. Um, you're, again, you're doing the same thing that Alex has done. This pose is huge, okay? And this, this isn't so huge. Now, we don't need to care about volumes so much when we're roughing. But, but your guy, as he's gone only this high off the ground, and his legs have grown this big, and then here, they're kind of here, it doesn't feel like he's traveling particularly high or high enough. That's actually a good height for a trot, but because his legs get so much bigger, um, we don't really feel that he's getting so high off the ground, right? When I say bigger, they just get bigger in mass, okay? You can stretch and squash, but it just gets big in mass. And, and here, there's not much movement in the arms, right? There's not enough of a reach forward in this arm as we go into the up, right? Which is why the arms don't really feel like they're working. Now we come down, the legs are all small again, right? So here as he's off the ground, it's almost like his feet are still touching the floor, Mary, Mage, right? So he's not really left the ground to trot and hang in the air nicely, right? It's like he's constantly on the ground. So you've copied the poses, you've understood the mechanics. This side is a bit better. Can you see on this side, as we go up, it doesn't feel big and huge. And he's left the ground, right? This side's better. What about the arms here? Little bit of, um, little bit of movement on the arms. Again, here also what feels off about the leg is, is you've kind of got both scapula in the foreground here, right? So the one behind is now in front. So that's, that's not helping, right? Now again, when the arm connects with the ground, this doesn't relate right? The arm and foot, his foot's off the ground here. Look where it is in, in line with the ground, right? I'm going to keep my mouse cursor here so you can see, right? Let me just put my dead mouse cursor here, right? So look at that. There's not much of a distance and how big his thing is. So he's not really leaving the ground. And this sec, this step is is nice and big which is which is the mechanics is probably more correct and then when he takes this next step it's very very kind of small and like he leaves the ground but there's not much of a step there right it's like he's striding more with one side so i think you need to uh i would scratch this mage um i know that you're a lot better than this so scratch this and do it again um uh, there are some people who I wouldn't say that to, but I feel you're a lot better than this, and this was just not your best, all right? Not, not, maybe your mind was on your own stuff or something else when you were doing this, or you were listening to some Bob Proctor or something like that, but uh, focus, mage, okay? Um, doesn't really work, the front legs don't really work. Back legs kind of work, but um, not. It could be better. Make those poses relate, please. All right. Make if his paw is coming off the ground, right? Like this, right? And it's 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 doing this. We'll do this instead, right? So when it lands on the ground, right? It's got to feel like it's actually relating. We can feel that that's the same thing hitting the ground and we're feeling the impact. Don't have, don't have this, right? Don't have this like a, a, a little shape like this and then this like a, a big shape like this. That's an exaggeration. You didn't quite do that, but that's kind of like they don't relate. All right. Um, so give that another bash. Give that another bash. That's my suggestion. Don't have to. Okay. It's your life. Um, 
this isn't, I'm not personally mentoring you, but uh, as I said, this is more my goodwill. Uh, this isn't part of the library. I, I do this when I can, but uh, it's not quite working. Gerbis, um, it's been some weeks, but I've finished my front run cycle with in-betweens now. I've also started another front basic walk because my first try had some flaws, especially regarding the movements of the hands in the figure of eight rotation. Here are the keys. Okay, so let's first have a look at your front run. I noticed how listening to some explanations again and working out the keys was really helpful. Fantastic. So let's have a look. Gerbis is a great artist taking her time through the basics archive, which is what I recommend. Wow, very fluid, Gerbis. That's more fluid than the original. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's nice. Um, very nice. Very nice. I would say that... Um, It does lack a little bit of the impact as it lands because it's so fluid, which means that you've spaced everything a little bit linearly, but that's just me nitpicking. Actually, this this is just the arcing here is just beautiful. Um, the figure of eight motion in the arms, the arcing in the arms, the, the head is beautiful. Um, yeah, we just don't feel that hip changing enough as it uh, pushing off the ground to change enough. But it's still, that's the only minor thing. Don't do this again, okay? Don't do this again. That's the only minor thing. Um, the, the transition of the hip is, the way I time it in mine... I don't know how this has happened because you've followed mine. It looks like you've really followed mine. This is... We have a floaty weight, we land, and then we change the hip direction to give it a little bit of power. Uh, so, but yours, the hip direction change is a little softer. It, yes, we have it there. We have it there, actually. I guess I'm just really, wow, this is so fluid. It almost looks like a Richard Williams, uh, Richard Williams work. It's so fluid. Uh, that guy loves his ones. Beautiful. Gerbis, absolutely beautiful, lovely. Um, I'm going to look at your walk cycle. Um, yeah. Okay, let me slow this down. Let me see the dork and twist. First thing I notice is the I'm watching the squash and stretch of your midsection. Yeah, it feels... Again, I don't want to talk to you about volumes, especially at this stage, but your work is so precise that I, it's making me worry a little bit about volumes here on, on the door of, of the... But, but ignore that. That's just me just being carried away by your finesse, okay? We don't care about that, okay? Uh, we care more about the mechanics. Right, so we're in the contact. We're in the down. The hand comes down this time. Yes, very good. We want that hand to come down. That's where you missed that last time. Um, the hand comes up on the pass. It comes over and through. And again, um, this arm is moving back. So we're favoring it in. And it it comes down and out. Yeah, this one is a little less so. Look, I'm not I, I can't remember mine because I did it five years ago when I built the archive or four years ago. So you you I know that you'll be following what I'm doing. So if I push this one out more on this side than I have on the other one, then you just stick with what you've got. This one feels a little less in comparison to the other side but to be honest i know how precise you are and i know that after doing what you did last time and i pointed out that you missed that that you were going to be looking at that so i reckon mine also has that um, i'm going to trust that you're following mine so at the moment i'm quite happy with the hands 
and that the hands were the thing that killed your last one, to be honest, because everything else, the hip, let's see that figure of eight in the hip, comes down, pushes up, figure of eight, comes down, pushes up, figure of eight, in the hip, the head has got the obvious figure of eight, yeah, coming up on the down, uh, torso, I'm not even, I was going to ignore the torso because it all looks good to me, turning, turning, this looks good to me, this looks good to me, those arms aren't just going to be mechanically uh, going forwards and backwards, we got a little kick in them now, which is what's going to take away from the weightless arcs of the repeated forward backward arc, okay, the last thing you want is a walk cycle where the arm just swings forwards and backwards on the same arc, whether it's coming towards and away, or whether it's, you know, you want to have the arm loop and come back, and loop and come back, loop, have the loop bigger or smaller on whatever side you prefer. That's the way it should be. Um, just finished hearing the critique. Well, definitely restart. I mostly felt like it was very intimidating to be precise. So sacrifice that for progress. Now I'm at the habit. You don't need to be precise, mage, but you've got to, you, you can't miss what the whole thing's about, right? If he's up, it's got to feel like an up, right? And if he's down, it's got to feel like a down. Um, also now being aware of the problem was the height from the floor yeah but then, but then you don't want your it's a trot so it's got to be subtle so as i said i i believe that your hips you can push it a little bit but i believe your hips and your torso were kind of all right in their up downs right but it's more about the squash and stretch of the legs right it's more about having them sell the action and not just get massive and small that's not it's not about worrying about volume, it's about getting the illusion right, all right? Getting the illusion right. Selena Nina, the absolute star. I'm going to read out what she said. Selena Nina has already been through the basics, intermediate, advanced, and anatomy archives of real animator training. But, you know, she is a model... Uh, student or model learner she's gone back she understands that you can't just do something once twice or thrice she as she's gained more information and it's gone towards the flower sacks and the advanced head turns sometimes the fundamentals get forgotten especially when you're learning so she's gone right back to the basics archive and started all over again and I didn't ask her to do that, which is why I'm super, super impressed. Um, Selena, finish my pendulum review. Perfect way to build my know-how. My goal was to get better at understanding of the very important three laws of movement. It was a while since I've animated a pendulum, so I did the basic pendulum another two times. This was extremely helpful, and I feel I have better base knowledge. These lessons have also helped me understand how important repetition and consistency is. Thank you, Mr. AMB and everyone for all the support. Fantastic. Now, I'm not even going to YouTube these because I don't need to frame by frame them. I can just see. Now, Alex was asking me about smear frames and multiples. Look, if you wanted to do a, a yo-yo spinning, we do that in the ba basics archive, Alex. You know, so in the sp complete spinning pendulum. So that was a very, very um, flawless re uh, recreation of the exercise, Selena, of the complete pendulum, which is what you do when you finish learning about pendulums in the basics. Fantastic. Um, pendulum set link to the stop by the looks of it. The slow in is great. You see that's volume, that teaches you volume control. Right, that teaches you how to con if you can c hold the volume of, of the slowing of that without tracing it or sliding it like a cutout. Then you can you know, then you're going to be able to do an eye, a nose, or a whatever. This is the uh, we looked at that one. Um, what's this one? Drop and dangle, drop and dangle. Uh, all of these are just almost flawless, uh, Selena. Just um magnificent uh magnificent textbook stuff 
as good as what I've uh, given, as good as mine. Fantastic, brilliant, superb. This is, this is, I hope this is setting an example to everyone. Like, just because you think you, if you think you know, you don't know. Okay. Um, I often revisit these, not these exercises because I'm at a certain level now where it's more in my subconscious than somebody like Selena, who's just, you know, two, two and a half years into her training. She, she's two and a half years into her training and she's gone right back to do this. And that is what I think most people should be doing. Um, but then there's a tendency to think that one is above these things. And that's where that's where standards start dipping. So I'm very, very impressed with that, Selena. Fantastic work. Um, and yeah, again, you're going to keep on. You're going to have you tried the dialogue test yet, Selena? Because that's something in the advanced archive that you need to do which you don't you can't follow along with me because you need to create your own dialogue and you follow the way I teach it but you can't do the my example right so i think you can be thinking about doing that while you're doing these consolidation exercises as well um Okay, Hung Ming Hui, it's been a while. Here are the back muscles. I'm just going to leave these Hung Ming... Oh, no, I, I looked at Alex's. I'm going to leave Hung Ming Hui's back muscle studies to himself. Um, I've given enough explanation about bones and the ways to look at bones and muscles when we talked about Alex's. Um, so, again, drawing these muscles is one thing, uh, but unless you really try to understand here you are okay here you are which is good you really try to understand how they squash and stretch so origin and insertion points um, so for example if the if the person is stretching this way right so I'll just make up a pose, right? So we have someone stretching, right? Let's do it a slight up angle, right? Right. And then they can be is kind of crossed legged, right? Right, so See, I get a feel for the pose, but then it's my musculature understanding that, that knows all this. So pelvis is hair, right? Greater trochanter is hair. Pelvis, pubis, right? Glutes, okay? So origin and insertion of the abductors, the ischism bone, right? Where the gracilis is going to come to around the patella here and underneath there the abductor magnus the abductor brevis all connecting to the femur right so origin and insertion is going to help me solve the problem the sartorius the iliac crest right coming in here this is tricky around to the patella tendon which is hair right so origin and insertion Again, here I will need to think about what is lumbar vertebrae is going to be a little bit kind of straight, leaning forward, and the thoracic vertebrae is going to be here, and the cervical vertebrae is here, and his atlas is causing his head to bob this way, right? So we need to understand this. The spine can't do that. The spine's pretty straight, right? The atlas bone is here. The rotation that's occurring is here. Now again, quadratus lumborum, okay? Which I was talking about earlier, iliacus. Latissimus dorsi will be around here, okay? So it'll be coming and inserting itself to the back right of that and it'll be on the humerus bone which will be here 
So latissimus dorsi is on the humerus bone, right? So then, again, here on the rib cage is the serratus anterior, right? Which is going to be coming around here like this, right? So then here's where the pectoralis on the sternum, right? Where all these kind of things come. Uh, Upper rectus abdominis is going to be a big sheath coming like this, right? Here and in the middle of the pelvis here. So one, two, three, four. So the ribcage ones will be here. So his ribcage will be more here, right? Latissimus coming here. Bicep. So again, the long head of the tricep, the insertion point, the bicep coming to the scapula. Right, so it's going to be like this. Now his pinky is here, so his ulna is here. So the ulnaris is going to be wrapping around either side of that. Right? Again here. So you see this kind of stuff is the real way. So again here, we're going to think about the rear deltoid which is all attached to the scapula. The bicep, which is attached to the scapula, is going to be coming here. Origin and insertion, right? So then we've got the twisting here of the long head of the tricep. We wouldn't see the lateral. The tricep tendon actually would be more on this side, right? Tricep tendon here. Let's color it in, right? Here would be this side, the brachioradialis a little bit, and the flexor ulnaris coming through there so you see again here the we have the um, vastus lateralis underneath those abductors around there and the rectus femoris right um, abductor magnus abductor brevis abductor longus again origin at the um, pubis and the um, ischism bone, right? The glutes will come further down here. Tensor fasciolati would be here. Um, so it's, this drawing is really quite scraggly and I don't need, I could have, I could make a much nicer drawing because I know where everything is. But my point is gastrocnemius, okay? Uh, extensor tibialis anterior extensor digitorum longus okay it's gonna come and come into all of those extensor halacus okay it's gonna come around here all coming from a lot running along the tibia right so the thing is you've done it but whenever you make these drawings that, that 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 you're looking it's good that's good image of the man bruce there um it's important to understand the origin and insertions okay so you've drawn the winged lats here um they're inserting on the on the humerus bone which is good right it's coming here on the humerus bone um These drawings are looking like they're, 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 some of them are research and some of them are your own investigation, which is good. Yeah, you're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Okay, good. Just keep it up. Uh, this is an old post from Akau where he did this on paper. We already commented about that in December, so I'm going to leave that. Angela shared this four hours ago, single suspension gallop. Um, looking good, Angela. Again, though, you want to be mindful of the spine, the level, okay? Um, I, I don't draw the connecting spine, all right, because... I want you guys to be able to develop that ability, but you want to 
understand that this is going to be lower right than that if it was it would be doing that which would be an extreme example which you could do if you were doing a kicking horse but then the horse you know you could do that but it would you know you need to be a little bit mindful because here it just feels like it's it's slightly off and it looks like you've kind of tried to fix it a little bit up here but this is definitely a lot better than than what you posted previously again you're doing the same thing here what mage burger is doing it's not about volume it's just about the the illusion can't be ruined by by a sudden massive gain like that that's mass which is different to volume it's almost like the camera is trucking out tracking into the dog and he's getting bigger right he's very small now this is going to make the squash and stretch he's squashing hair and he's stretching hair but he's he's getting so small here that we just we're not able to see and then here we're not really understanding that limb so that limb as that limb kicks back on the other side right this we're gonna have to have the this going here right with that ball there like that you can need to be able to feel that right at the moment it's not really feeling like you know, there's going to be another, um, let's see, what have I got here? So this is going like this, right? So I guess these, these guys always, so the scapula is here, this comes here. Um, I've gone and confused myself. Let me start. <laughs> go back to the straight line, right? So this always comes back on itself from the scapula, right? So this can go like this, right? But this is always the smaller bone, and this is the longer bone, right? So then if this is coming forward, this is still going to be a small bone. This is still going to be a long bone, right? That, right? So then even if this is lifting off the ground and it's squashing and stretching back, right? At, at its furthest point, right? This is still going to be, um, even if the body's hiding it, which is where, you know, the confusion occurred this is still gonna be like that right so you need to watch your length of the bones uh, because here this is like it feels like it's broken in the legs there I know that the pose does look like that but again it look like that with it look like that but be a bit more convincing because of the way the limb is drawn also um yeah so the the main issue is your keys and extremes um so you got the action right um angela that the, the, here's the thing with you all right um you you get the action right and for the most part you get the mechanics right but then you want to stay you're, you're you're kind of staying in that safety zone and when it comes to tidying it up, you'll tidy it up with this sketchy line, which is acceptable. But that's not the only aspect of tidying it up. You know, you can have a sketchy line, which is acceptable. But then you got to have your key. You got to have your keys and more importantly, your extremes. Because the keys come after the extremes. They've got to kind of have the same mass. All right. We're not talking about if there's a slight volume issue or whatever that's fine right we don't care if 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 his le leg is longer slightly by you know uh, uh maybe about you know one fifth in one drawing or even a third we'll push it to a third in a but if you're if you're like hips and legs are this small right in one image and then in the other image, they're like this huge, right? The animation is going to look strange because you're changing the arc, okay? And if the arc doesn't work, then it's not going to work properly because, again, people under don't understand that people who want to, 
who want to solve volume issues and mass issues are stuck in the box of volume and mass and they need to open that box because the three fundamental laws arcing, timing, slow in and slow out, right? If those three things ain't working, then other stuff ain't going to work, right? So if you're, by getting your, your masses drastically out in your extremes, which are your extremes or your plot points of your journey, but what your arcs, okay? And then your keys define where those arcs go, right? So say you want to go from here to here, right? So you're going to put a key in here. That's pretty boring. Well, let's throw in an anticipation. So now we're going to go here, right? Let's throw in an overshoot. So now we're going to go here, right? Let's then throw in a, um, a bit of secondary action and have him come back on himself and then go round um, here like this. So my keys are now changing that arc to make the animation a whole lot more interesting. Now I'm going to throw in some breakdowns, right? Right? That are going to that are going to make this arc again a lot more interesting, right? Right, let's bring that here. Let's throw in the breakdown here, right? But then as if my extremes aren't drawn to side the right size, then everything else is going to fuck up. Which is why it's all about arcing, right? The hierarchy is what what you need to really need to understand. Otherwise, it's, you're never you're not going to go beyond this, Angela. You've made progress, but you've got to understand that hierarchy. I'm going to leave Hung Ming Hui's uh, studies because I've given him enough and Alex enough of an insight on that. Octavio Velasquez has inspired something to think about here um, for me. Um, Hi friends, I'm so excited to finally show something of the film I'm working on with the help of AMB's edutainment archive. It just feels great. I'll continue working on it and put me to the test with all the things I've learned. I'm learning by watching AMB's examples. Cheers, love you all, thanks. Octavio is learning from Octavio has worked his way through the basics intermediate and advanced and he's now watching my how to make your own film edutainment series and he's trying to storyboard his own film so I'm going to give him a little bit of feedback on this um, and then I'm going to talk about something that I might do or might not do uh, I guess I got to get a feel if there's a market for it um, okay so let's have a look no sound okay let me put the okay nice but first thing I want to understand is, is you've opened with this nice shot here, but I'm not sure what this is. Is this the is this an image of a rear view mirror in a car, or is this because here there's a fence here and there's there's suddenly this image in the circle. So I'm not sure what it is. There's a car cut off here. So are we seeing something in a in a rear? Is Octavio in the chat? Um. Octavio in the chat. I thought I saw him in the chat. No. Oh well. Yes, he is. Octavio Velasquez. Make yourself known. Make yourself known. If you if you're there. So tell me what this is. Okay. Is this a rear view mirror in a car, or is it somebody peeping through a telescope? Uh, because I'm not clear. I'm not clear, so I'm going to hold off on talking about that shot at the moment. So that's our opening shot. It's fine if that's the opening shot, but I'm not clear what it is. Right? It looks kind of like a traffic light, someone says. It's a mirror in the street, AMB. Okay, 
It's a mirror in the street. Now, I don't know about mirrors in the street, but who, like, whose mirror is it? Is it a mirror? Is it like a street? Is it, is it, is there a, is it like a street lamp with a mirror? Or is somebody looking in, in the mirror? Um, I need to know this before because I, then I can give you better feedback. Um, what what context is this mirror? How did this mirror get here? Okay. Um, so I'm going to keep watching this. So here you've got some acting with the girl where it's a mirror looking at the girl. We're looking at a reflection of a girl through a mirror in the street. And the girl is is going through some little having some little acting, which is fine. Don't have much to say about that. Um, it's one of those convex mirrors. I don't know. I don't see them in, in uh, the UK or New Zealand. So you'll have to forgive me. Um, uh, but what I would say, because I haven't got any feedback from Octavio about the mirror, is you need to establish where this mirror is before we look at the before we look at the before we start looking at the girl so maybe maybe you can um maybe if it's a mirror in the street you can have a low angle and you can be you can establish the street right and you can pan up from that establishing shot and track in to where the mirror is it's called the convex traffic mirror to look out for cars while crossing the street okay so here's the thing staging octavio staging remember your little the little map we drew in the center thing have the image of the street say where the girl is what house she is if the mirror is looking uh, the mirror is either going to be here or it's going to be here uh or directly opposite figure that out right then design your street a little bit. You got a fence there and stuff like that. So uh, that would help. Then you maybe want to have like a little, if, if it's a sunny day staging, what kind of weather is it? You're going to want to have like, it could be a ray of sunshine that reflects on that mirror, giving it a spark. And then the little girl will appear in it as, it, as she comes into focus. That kind of stuff, right? Um... So need to stage that a little bit better. If it was a rear view, if it was a mirror, side mirror in the car, you could have the car pulling up, right? And then a hand possibly, or not a hand, you, but, you, but even the car pulling up, adjusting the mirror to see what's going on, you know? So this is a good way to open a scene. You need to establish a little bit more, right? Um, give us a little bit more information. Um, so now we got after seeing this, which is great. This is kind of like, I'm like, I'm not sure you were panning. It's okay. We can pan. So we're looking at, this is a new scene I'm imagining. So we're looking at the, uh, the countryside or something like that. So we've moved away from the street. Don't have your son cut off at the top there. Okay. Uh, have the if it's if it's super bright gradiented maybe but either have it have it more around about here or down here or whatever so depending on the time of day so that's good this is a nice shot it's quite straight on it's not low it's not high but we're looking at the sheep level so you got to think another question you want to ask yourself here is is a uh, how tall is our viewer in this shot, right? Is he is he head level with the sheep, right? So we're looking. So are we not going to be looking slightly down at the sheep, which will make it a little bit more cinematic, or up at the sheep, which will make it cinematic and a little bit more dramatic, um, uh, or whatever, right? So it's a little bit square uh, square on, but it's a nice shot establishing. Uh, the environment so this is good the sheep I'll imagine will have a chewing cycle on it so that's good um, as it turns its head the sheep notices something so what you could have there 
um, is is you could you could beef it up a bit more. You could like have a a shot of a sh you know a sheep eating hair. You know you could either follow the sheep as it pauses and chews. You know um, hair. So camera would move hair. Then the sheep turns its head and looks as a little few bits of food fall from its mouth or whatever. Or you could do it just like this, the way you had it. So just think of things, little bit ways to to establish the, the serenity of the scene. Now again, here you've got the girl walking. Um, we're seeing her feet. Again, it's very, um, it's very, very side on. Now this is all right, Octavio. There's nothing wrong with this. It's a good start. Um, but you've got an interesting prop here, right? So as the sheep's looking, you could play with size and dynamic, right? So the sheep turns its head. How about we see some wheels? We like we've got how about we see some wheels moving, right? Then as we see that wheel moving, we start with the wheel kind of hits a pebble goes over the pebble the pebble rolls towards us we could either use that as a cut point or we could track up uh i would cut actually and then we'll have a a shot of the duck in the hat okay so remember the going back to the staging lecture in the training library how we went and designed that box octavio with the button that the sack was going to do all the things you know you've you've got a great prop here so you can really play with the the thing so the duck has uh, got a little vibration cycle on this duck and then then as the ducks going there we may start we've got some more dramatic angle like we're making the duck look big here it could be coming towards us instead of just flat again you want to there's nothing wrong with the flats uh 2d uh left to right thing but we want to, as traditional hand-drawn animators, not be so flat as the puppetry and be so cut out like that. So we want to think more in terms of uh, having a little bit of dimension and perspective. So then after this thing's moving, we could then uh, we could then have a top shot of a foot coming into the ground of the girl's walk and the foot goes out and away, right? like that so that could be the next shot foot steps in takes a step out it's a top down shot so here we're looking up at the duck here we're looking down at the foot so this is giving the this is giving a lot more scale right so we're looking up at this duck we're looking at this wheel we're kind of side level we're looking i'm drawing very scraggly here if you can't understand let me know i'm being fast i'm talking to you like you're one of my employees right so uh so then we're gonna you may as well be octavio um you've been studying real animator training a long enough time now so here um the foot is gonna come out at this stop angle step away and then you can kind of after all that you can have this shot which is a little bit tight but it's kind of nice you got the flower again i would i would uh so you got the flower here so you've got this shot here which establishes that right which establishes that now now then um what you have in that shot happening is you have a screen left to screen right thing now this is a great shot because now with all the other things we're we're being a little bit slower we're allowing that kind of pacing you got this up angle here right there's a house there's a fence or a bridge or something the perspective's a bit strange here uh the horizon line is here i'm not sure what we're looking at there but this is rough at the moment so we don't care right um but you, we've got, we've got a strange thing going on with the hole and the horizon line and the perspective. But I, but it's a good shot, right? Uh, it's intimidating. We're panning down, and we see this little girl standing here, which is great. Uh, very spirited away. Love it. The only thing is, what I would do is is I would have the girl hair, all right? 
just off the center of the screen. So you've got your intimidating thing here, right? You only want a little bit of her head showing, right? Which is, but I would have her just off center hair, right? And I would have the everything coming this way towards us. Why? Because she went from screen left to screen right, screen left to screen right. So the hookup makes more sense rather than having her this way, right? Which is remember the 180 degree line rule, right? If where a camera's on this side filming her walking this way, then if the camera is going to be behind her and the bridge is going to be here, we're going to be seeing her on this side, right, of the screen, right? So if this is the screen camera view, we're going to be seeing her on this side. Even if we go here, we're still going to see her on this side. If we go all the way here, suddenly she's going to be on the other side, right, of the screen, which is what you have meaning that you've crossed the line, okay? So that's very important that you you fix that. We talk about the line in the edutainment archives. Um, now, so that's an easy fix. Uh, this is a good shot. Um, again, though, you want it to be intimidating, so you're square on. So what I would do, I love the character, love your drawing. I love the, the, the anime uh, feel to your drawing. I would have her central, but I would be, again, having her, having it a slightly up angle. Doesn't have to be as dramatic as what I'm doing, but just, you know, I like your framing there, right? Just at a slightly under the camera even if you're going to do it like this right just this just makes it a little bit more cinematic than having everything square on right again we're under her this is a good a good drawing nice appealing drawing but it's very flat on and it doesn't really add to the intimidation of what's going on here um Again, you can see the left-right balance not quite working um, because she's come from one side. So here she is that that is that the next pose, right? So she has another pose. She looks. Which is, again, it's good. Now, as she looks, you may want to put a little bit of a camera pull out um, as she's looking, uh, and then we're going to ease into this, which is good. Um, now here we're back to this shot. So, again, I would I would be a little bit... Let's first see her acting. Okay. Right. So, I would be a little bit more tighter here. Right. Because we're, she's being determined. Right. So, I would be a little bit more tighter as those hands come in around that hat. Right. So, immediately we got a nice frame, eyes, expression triangle here, rule of thirds, right, kind of thing, framing that face uh, nicely. Fantastic, Octavio, I'm glad, I'm glad. So here's this, now she looks down and sees a footprint, right? So you could act, do a good facial acting with the eyes, a bit of double blink, a glance down, tighter. So there's this footprint. This footprint is hair. Again, because you're going for that anime Miyazaki vibe. Now, one of the things I absolutely love about Miyazaki, which the Western filmmakers don't do so much, and I'm always pushing for it, and they're going, oh, no, we'll have to model that. We don't have it in the budget, especially if you're working on TV. Is as I say, if you see a footprint like that, right? Just to, you want to play with the intimidation thing. You might want to have like a insect just casually crawling along it, right? Just like that, and you a little bit of a camera drift, right? And the camera drift uh, could be drifting towards 
or it could be pulling out with a slight drift right i was gonna say drift back as if kind of subconsciously saying go back go back but that might not help with the flow but this is the time to experiment so um those are my initial thoughts on it octavio overall it's good you just need to establish things and build and beef more things up about it you will remember in my groundhopper mood boards i had him by the fire right but those were like full color things that I, they weren't the full storyboard. What he'll do while he's by the fire is he will remember how he got his fur coat. Who gave him this fur coat as he's staring into the flames. So um, I didn't storyboard that because I just stuck to the basic essentials. But if you're working rough and you're doing it as a storyboard, um, then you should put in as much information as possible Um to to get this stuff out there i would say it's good that you're drawing it nicely but explore a little bit before you commit so much to drawing it in um hopefully this gives you a few things to think about now i'm gonna come on camera and, and i'm gonna, gonna briefly, briefly talk, talk about what octavio has inspired me to think about now this might not be um this might not happen because I need to get a feel for the way it goes. Um, I've been thinking for a while of the way to take real animators training people once they've uh, gone beyond the training library and they want to start making their own stuff and Octavio is always leaning into that. And I feel I'd really be able to help someone like Octavio um, if I was personally one-to-one doing something with him for for i would i would make it three months for example so the first month we will determine the characters so you'll make your own film it'll be like a make your own film mentorship a three month course that that i would do with i would say i would have no more than uh three to five people um i mean but then again the, the it's always about the price so maybe some of you just would bow out so we'll talk about that later so the thing is it would be like the first month you would design your characters and your environments and you would work the staging out um and you would have to uh have a a, a small script or something prepared it can be a chapter from a book a paragraph from a book it can be whatever you want it to be but it'll have to be small something that we could do in like two to two to three minutes so you can get good animation out of it so the first month we'll be doing that the second month we will create the um we'll create the animatic the storyboard uh, the layouts um and in the final month we will um we will do the animation now the animation when you come out of it may still be rough tied down needing to be cleaned up which you can color and do at your own time if you want but we're going to make the film from start to finish in three months and you'd be personally one-to-one uh, doing that with me now the way I see it, I want to price it fair and I want to make it manageable, but it's got to be you, you're having my time at a certain point uh, time, um, probably three to four times a week for about maybe a couple of hours or even more. And it's serious one to one stuff. And my attention and thing is, is going to that. So I would be doing it. At, uh, it, it would total to around about I'm thinking just offhand 3000 uh uk which will probably be about four um in usd and this would only be available to people now i say only available to people who have completed the basics intermediate and advanced archives now that's a, that's a long journey for some of you but the thing is I don't want to have to teach you animation when you're at this stage. 
that's what the library is there for. That's what all of the other stuff that you is there for. Octavio is now ready to move forward. Okay. Yeah, for you know exactly for what you're getting. It's it's. I'm glad you say that, uh, um, Silver Sun, because um, for what you're getting, you're getting an intensive animation course, uh, and you'll have an awesome film at the end of it. Kind of like something like what Travis did, right? Um, so I helped Travis. Um, although Travis pretty much did a lot of that on his own. Uh, so the thing is, is it's up in the air. I need to get a feel. I might do a poll in the group. How many of you would possibly be interested in that for me to consider putting energy and time into that? But what I see here is, is I see people like Octavio. Octavio has worked his way hard through the training library and he's developed some skills. And the thing is, is now he wants to he wants to take them and use them and go further. And the Edutainment Archive is helping him do that. And he could continue to do that. And I'm always here to give him quick little pointers just like what um what i did now but what i did now would be a taste of imagine having that having that for an hour or two okay so specifically about the feedback of whatever you'd be doing so these are little things that i've um your schedule would allow it um because again We'd, we'd have to work out the time differences and when we'd be able to speak to each other because I, I, what, I, what essentially I would be doing is, is I again, I'm thinking of the top of my head. I, I never, I, I would probably end up needing to work it out a little better than this. This is just something that's come to me after looking at Octavio's work today and thinking I could really help this guy. He can do it alone through the edutainment material, but if there's the if, if there's somebody who I could take forward and he's willing to pay for it, then um, I'm not saying Octavio specifically, but he's made me think. Um, then I'd be like, yeah. So it would be like, well, okay, this is your script. Report back to me in two days to see where you've taken it. This is your okay. So this is your script. Your script's got characters. It's got environments, it's got props. Report back to me in two days with this many drawings of your sketches of the character, this many drawings of your ideas for the environment, okay? Then report back, okay, we've got that down. In the first week, we've got our characters, our environments, and our things. I don't care if somebody else is listening to me and they're gonna build a course. They ain't gonna be. They they they're nothing in terms of my ability to teach and and train. So they're more than welcome to try and steal my thoughts. Good luck. Make lots of money. Okay. So um, so you would basically say okay. So the first the first uh month is gonna be characters. So we're gonna talk about what you're going to do with the characters in the it's not characters it's all of the pre-production so the first week will be characters the second week will be environments the third week will be staging ideas props okay and then fourth week will be color direction on such if you have such or refining depending on where you're going if I see you're struggling, I'll be like, nah, we need to spend another week on the characters. Scratch the color direction. That doesn't matter. Okay. Mood and look is important, but I need to see the most important thing is working one-to-one -one with you to see where you're at and what you need to, to, to move forward. Right. So it's it'll, it'll be a little bit flexible like that. Next month will be the animatic, like what we're doing here. Okay. So... Give me a rough storyboard in uh, a week about what you want. You don't know how to storyboard? I'll give you a few tips and ideas. Okay, go through the first half or the first quarter of your script. Come back to me in at the end of the first week. Okay, 
if you come back to me at the end of the first week we'll look at it we'll start refining it going more and more so then at the end of the month um, you're gonna have that so then obviously week uh, third and final month is uh, the end of the storyboard month we'll be doing layouts third and final month we'll be taking those layouts and we'll be animating them and I'll be saying to you well how much life what are you trying to say with this animation and we'll be critiquing each shot um, and looking at it like that so this is an idea uh, that is come to me and um, I don't mind so at the moment anybody watching this who is in the training library who's been through the three uh, lectures I'm not going to release this as a product I might do a little poll but if somebody is interested in doing this with me uh, who's from training library uh, just give me a DM or a personal message um, to to be able to do that it's amazing Hervonia but remember that this is something that I want to do for people again what does the R in the back represent I don't want to just take people's money and get them excited it's like people have to kind of qualify for this mentorship which is do you know the six laws of movement and do you know the six laws of life and is your drawing to a certain level right I don't want to do what other I'm not going to mention the name but another place does which is says you know, let's make you make your own film and the person can't really draw the person can't really animate and then they're worrying about making a film it's it's a con for me I'm not going to do that um, so I I want people to come out like Travis has come out with something that other people go what the wow where did that what that that was so you're going to go through the basics, intermediate and advanced. You're going to have done the anatomy or show me that, yes, you can draw to a certain level. So then it's like, OK, it's like I don't take portfolio requirements. I take like, OK, well, have you been through real animator training? Yes. Well, now is the time to move forward. Even if some people have been through training and I'm like, I think your drawing is a little weak at the moment right now maybe we'll think about the mentorship in six months or something like that so it's always the thing is is I've worked long and hard to build it's amazing and I thank you guys for it I've got one thing that I know I have is people's trust and I'm so thankful for that and I've worked for that um, so the last thing I want to do is is screw that up three thousand pounds or four thousand US in the grand scheme of things um, is not a huge amount especially it's very valued for what you're getting from this but and that's not the training library anybody joining I'm talking about a new mentorship thing I'm doing which is not even you know it's just up in the air but the thing is to some of you guys that's a heck of a lot of money okay that's that's a lot of money um, to some of you guys and I'm not going to take it if I don't think you're ready to get the the results that you want and and that's why I would never do that because it's all about trust and it's all about making sure well do you know how to do all this before you come to me for help with this you can go to someone else for help with that and they can help you good luck I wish you the best but I don't think I can help you until you understand these things so it's very important that that that's clear but I'm glad that you're getting excited I'm glad I want to I want to get a feel for from the real animator people like Hervonia like Charlene like um, Octavio and whoever uh, Kevin Silver would is this something that you'd consider if it is then I'll put a bit more energy into it 
If it's not, then we'll leave it because um, I'm wor busy working on Groundhopper and stuff like that. And um, I'm quite happy to continue uh, with the status quo um, with the library. Just let the library do the teaching while I uh, do the create projects and expand that way. But as I'm seeing work from people like Octavio, it's inspiring me as well because Travis did it. And I'm thinking we're going to have Octavio is going to be next. He He's going to make something whether I whether he does the thing with me or not, because he's been he's given off so much of a vibe that that's the way he's going. And I'm going to help him regardless in the small way that I am ha and have been on these free live streams. So it's because it's a pleasure to do that. But the thing is, is like, it's just inspiring to me that like more and more people coming out of the real animator training system are now making short films to flex their muscles. And it's just making me think, well, I can really help these guys. Now they know what they're doing. Now they're not so worried about the animation and the drawing. We can, we can help push it further. So it's just very inspiring. I always grow. I help you guys grow, but you guys help me grow by where when i've when you've kind of been learning and you've taken my training to a point where i can see here's where we can train you some more um ba -ba -bum. i want you to make your projects to amb i'll i'll be making my projects and ultimately anything that comes into uh in like if if the mentorship comes in more and more um then it just increases uh, the, the funds that I have as well to put towards uh, the projects. You know, half of the thing is I can do amazing projects, but then raising capital for those projects costs capital. OK, so am I willing to put a whole lot of capital into Little Red or do I want to keep the capital I've got now to put towards the Groundhopper, you see? So personally, Groundhopper all the way for me. And I know you feel the same. <laughs> so so that's why we're doing it that way. But I love Little Red too. Um, I gave it a shot. I, I invested some capital into that as well. But um, it's time to move on to Groundhopper. But it's also, you know, we can't forget what this is all about, which is real animator training, um, which, is, which is the bread and butter of uh, the whole AMB brand at the moment. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, we, we might do a poll in the group uh, to see if people are up for that or not. But thanks, Octavio. Your post actually inspired me uh, to, to do that because it was, um, it's, it's great. So hopefully my little tips have given you some things to think about. This, is, this live stream isn't going anywhere, Octavio. Let me see. Is yours the last post? We got more anatomy from Hung Ming Hui afterwards, which I'm not. We've got something from Akao, and yeah, so I'm going to go back. There's a few more things I'm going to look at, um, and then I'm going to go back. Uh, okay, so Octavio, yeah, that was awesome. Um, thanks for sharing that. Hopefully my pointers have helped you move forward. I think I gave you some pretty good nuggets, but I was pretty fast. So um, you can uh, always watch this live stream as many times as you like to get it. It ain't going anywhere. It's staying on YouTube. All right. Now, um, I'm going to go to Akao's breakdown of Princess and the Frog Hair. Um, Akao, it's very readable that this is Dr. Facilier. But I can't help but feel that your silhouettes of this guy could be stronger. I know that you're just blocking at the moment because I read your comments, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But if, 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 is, if, is this a breakdown? I'm not clear what this is, Akal. You've just said dialogue test. Is this your own voice? I don't want to get... I'm going to put the... I'm going to turn the desktop audio off and listen to the... Yeah. 
Yes, Akal. So you're you you're using the original dialogue. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is your own dialogue test, or or if this is a breakdown from the film. If it's a breakdown from the film, remember you're doing this not to get the animation right. You're doing this to get the study so I feel you should have drawn him in a bit more and got the shapes a bit more accurate if it's your own dialogue test to do it then that's a whole new new ball game so you gotta be specific here what it actually is you're just writing dialogue test and posting the link um, so I'm not really sure what that is um, You have said it's a breakdown from the film. Okay, breakdown from the film, Akau. Then we need to be... You need to... Uh, let me watch it once more. Good, you're looking at keys. You're not trying to in between it. Yeah. I feel that you should... You you need to be more make these more get the drawings right, because um, this is a this is a close up of his face, and it's gonna be about the arcs, but also about a lot of this is about the drawing, so be a, uh, more descriptive. It's the, it feels like you're just making a start here, so um, get doctor. One thing about Doctor Facilier is his amazing draftsmanship. I'm, I like you. I'm not a fan of the movie. I do personally like the Big Fat Crocodile because I think Eric Goldberg is an amazing animator and his animation is amazing. But I'm not a huge fan of the movie. Um, maybe not for the same reasons you are not, but we're both not huge fans of the movie. But the one thing we can agree on is Dr. Facilier is, is amazing. So we want to get those amazing strong shapes and drawing uh garners so m m knock yourself out with the drawings on this one akal okay this is to help help you understand appeal uh that's why you're doing it exaggeration drawings and shapes um selena's pendulums more of those we've seen Savada Zacharians um, or Zacharians. He said I got his name correct last time. Now he's made me feel kind of like insecure because I, I, I'm not sure if it's Zacharians or Zacharians. Um, so let's have a look at Savada's basic. I saw these earlier on Instagram and they look pretty perfect to me. Yep. Nice. At the moment, it doesn't matter because uh, you're 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 doing it all so well, uh, Savada. So normally, I would say don't bother bother coloring it in, as long as you're getting the anim. Because coloring takes time and energy, and I like to see the line, so I like looking at it like this. But because you've done it so well, you haven't wasted any energy. Uh, normally, when people get these wrong, I say all that energy you spent coloring it in um you could have spent getting it right you know but in your case um hey these are two pretty flawless recreations of uh of my jumping ball i do feel that your scamper here is a little slow for some reason i'm not sure why or maybe i just remember mine to be uh better than what it was but otherwise yeah i'm looking for things to say to be constructive and it's not happening. You did a pretty flawless job at recreating those exercises. Fantastic, Savada. Continue. Uh, when there's something for me more to say, <laughs> then I'll give it to you. Um, Kevin Silver, his turnaround character construction. I have to say, Kevin Silver, I'm mighty impressed with this. I'm mighty impressed with this. Um... Daniel Garcia posted one the other day. And in many ways, um, now your your rear leg turn here is a little off in the arc. Okay, so watch his rear leg here. In many ways, um, 
there are things that Daniel, you, you and Daniel both have your animation down, but you both are struggling a little with the drawing aspect. And this exercise, I feel, is going to really help you both. In many ways, in some things, Daniel is stronger, and in some things, you have done stronger. So I'm really happy with this, Kevin Silver, because what that shows to me is that you're leveling up. You're leveling up. Um, there are issues like, for example, this arm is on this side and this arm's on this side, yet this side feels bigger than this side, which is closer to us, right? So his arm isn't quite following the path that it should follow. But it's very difficult exercise, right? It's a very difficult exercise. And just going through it once, Kevin Silver, just like for Daniel Garcia, it's building brain cells, right? So it's impossibility to get it 100% or even 90% or even 75% accurate, uh, especially when you're working on your drawing skills, right? Um, at where you are. So, but I would have to say that this is amazing. This is for a first attempt with all of the, I'm not going to give you the illustrations I always give you about the massive head walk cycles that you used to do proportion wise everything his head's a little big but i mean you're really starting to come get it now um so i'm not going to linger on this i'm not going to talk to you about what you what's wrong here uh, and what's off i've mentioned a few things but there's a lot of little things like that in there that doesn't matter kevin silver on the whole this has been a success um you for the most part you've kept the illusion You've kept the illusion and it works. There's a slight jiggle. There's a slight uh, growing and shrinking of his arms on either side, which is taking it away. His feet more almost feel consistent throughout. Uh, his body feels consistent and his head grows and shrinks a little bit as it comes towards us and goes away. You see that chin growing and shrinking. But aside, the thing is, is overall, that's a brilliant uh that is real progress i wish you could see that kevin because i know i'm going to talk to kevin, kevin for, for a, a second, second here I know, I know that you're always oh i can't do this and i can't do that and i'm oh and this and that and the problem is is that spoils moments like this for, for you and for many people and this is very very healthy if you could only sit back and see just how far you've come. Pedro's the same. Red Fox. Um, Akau, I think, understands how far he has come. But many people would really struggle and be always down on themselves. And they, they, when moments like this happen, they can't take energy from it to go even further. Because if you could see, if you could feel, and if you, if you could truly look at... Because we can pull your line tests up. It's all in this group from way back when you were doing the basics walk cycles and you could see your stick man then compared to the stick man now even your uh, martial arts stick man from the intermediate archive and you see his massive head and and the you know the strange proportions of the legs and the hips sometimes and then you look at this you could see like well this guy he's come a long way he's doing really well um yeah, never mind about what, what what's wrong with this one, Kevin, whether you had to readjust. You've gone through a process. This is a 15-part lecture and lecture series, and it's very, very... It takes a lot of work to do this. It's very difficult. So see it through. Go, go over this with the guy. Don't fix things. Just go over it with the guy like what Daniel Garcia did. Go over it with the guy like what Daniel Garcia did, and understand that at some point you're going to have to return to this not not straight away don't go and do it immediately after that's 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 you know fatigue that'll fatigue you out bore you cripple you but understand that this is just the building blocks of these foundations you're going to revisit it at some point but this is essential growth this is magnificent growth and i truly Maybe I'll, it would be nice to just uh, click on your own name or 
type your name in the search and scroll back and look at or you've got it's your work you created it if you didn't delete it look at all those old walk cycles you used to do look at all those old things and then look at this and sit there and go and understand that that's you okay and understand that that's you you've made that growth okay and that's serious growth that's not that's not not that's not nothing to keep this this thing of no you know the thing is is you should be happy but never satisfied that's a difference because the satisfied man gets lazy and before he knows it he's in a hole and he'll have to climb out so it's okay to be all the time wanting to improve that's what never being satisfied is but be happy uh, accept your wins and that's what will be healthy healthy growth so that's great uh, Kevin bum, 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 bum. Cameron Black this looks very um, uh, surreal but Cameron's just doing the uh, anatomy archive exercise just can't comment much on that but it looks great he's just following the video <laughs> um, this question i can't really answer he's about creating his own 3d animations we don't really do 3d animation here um with well i should say we don't do digital puppetry here we do real hand-drawn animation here so i wish this person the best but that's not really what we do so i can't help him um cameron black's working on the thumb fantastic cameron again i can't say much about these this is like the staging lectures you're just following the instructions again this is what the anatomy archive gives you that ken hub wouldn't give you so here he's gone through all of these exercises um he's understanding the squash and stretch of the um yeah understanding those movements understanding the saddle joint of the thumb yep there we go fantastic cameron and as ever is that Gandalf? Yes. Gandalf! Gandalf! I'm quoting the, um, what is it? Ralph Bakshi version. So there you go. Um, fantastic work. Charlene commented on this picture of Gandalf, which is why it's on the wall. We are hiring. Don't miss this great opportunity. 3d animation motion okay i'll tell you what i was about to delete it but there's a lot of people in this group who do do this stuff so i'm gonna leave that on the wall that's fine um angela walker i need some advice i was offered a freelance animation job the thing is with me being intermediate should i try to do it what they want to do something short my plan is to storyboard it out they will go fully and hire me if they like that i'm gonna talk about that at the end when we finish this um this person has said i'm trying to break through my doubt and fear by doing fight choreography are you doing fight choreography or are you just um here's the thing i'm not against this but you're you're just sliding heads and bodies to keep volume um and for me, there's there's no real attempt to do an, uh, good animation here. I'm not being mean or I'm not being nasty. There's just like, I mean, what is it? It's just one drawing of a, you know, of a guy's head with a little bit of movement around it. And I know what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to mimic the anime Dragon Ball or whatever style of animation. So here's the thing. There's not much I can say to help you because you seem to be doing what you're doing and doing a good job at it. Um, but I wouldn't call it fight choreography. I would just, because it's, it doesn't, obviously we know it's a fight, but what's happened here? What's the emotion behind the fight? So a block has happened. Um, there's a pose here. He's angry. I don't, you know. This guy's smaller, he disappears, he reappears, he moves his head. So, where's the other guy in all of this? 
Um, so if he's disappeared, what's the other guy's reaction? Why are we looking at his reaction? Right. So from a storyboarding point of view, um, he seems to be the one in control. So why don't we see the other guy getting ex uh, surprised? Uh, where has he gone after I've hit him? Instead, we see this guy and magically this hand appears, uh, which shows another punch has gone for him. So again, I don't really watch this. And now he's a lot smaller than this guy, right? He's a lot smaller than this guy, but now he appears massive to us in this in this shot, right? So again, everything is square on. We're looking at him square on. We're looking at the other guy square on. Um, so it would be better if this was a lower angle because the other guy is taller than him. And if we're looking at it from the other guy's point of view and he punches him, through here again it's a flat side on thing so here you could have pulled and tracked out to make it more dramatic so i'm trying to help you i'm trying to help you by telling you what you could do with the camera to make it more interesting but um the people that do this kind of work i don't really give much feedback because you're more interested in just mimicking something than creating something. That's the vibe I get from you. Because here you're just, you're not really animating it. You're just sliding his head back and forward and his arms are moving. Um, so I don't know what style of fighting he does. I don't even know. It, it, it doesn't. So what kind of punch is that? So the thing is, is, if you're talking about fight choreography, you're going to use a word like choreography, <clears throat> then I'm going to look at it in terms of choreography. So my view is, is I wish you the best with this, but it just looks to me like you're just mimicking something. You're just, I'm, I'm going to create my own. Now I don't watch Dragon Ball, but I've got Dragon Ball in my head. I'm going to create my own Dragon Ball style fight, which is, fine and there's nothing wrong with that and I wish you the best with that but it but what I do is is I like to take things beyond uh, beyond that I like to go deeper I like to explore real proper animation movement okay so if this guy's throwing a punch um, what's happening to his lower limbs as he throws the punch right so He's doing a same arm, same leg, so he's doing a karate style punch, right? But at the same time, the mechanics of the body don't really emphasize that. Um, you have got some nice drawings in here, though. I'll, you know, there's some nice uh, poses that you've gone for and, and things like that. But I don't really have much to say um, other than I'll just wish you the best and um, maybe be a little bit clearer about what you want um, uh, from it. Um, it's not really timed in any way. The, the, the blows are lacking power. Um, he's obviously thrown a punch, but this is a dynamic angle, and it's not a very dynamic view of the fist that he throws the punch at. There's no anticipation, okay? There's no anticipation here. Even if he gave a little bit of a smile or something, just to show that he was going to do something, there's there's none of that in there. So my advice to you would be think about the laws of animation to beef up your fight choreography because you obviously are wanting your fight to resemble an established style of anime um, and the good luck with that it looks like you're you've succeeded in that but if you want to take it further then you have to think about things like anticipation okay squash and stretch follow through overlap definitely arcs timing slow in and slow out um, 
primary and secondary action. And staging overall. You've done your staging, okay? Your staging's pretty good, okay? It looks like a Dragon Ball. It feels like that kind of thing. So overall, I'd say it was a successful video. But it could be so much more than what it is if you put some of those things in there. So that's my advice to that stuff. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else here that I can talk about. Not really. Um, yeah, that was a Okay, so I'm going to... That's that. Now I am going to come to Angela's question before we leave, okay? I'm going to answer Angela's question. Oh, come on. Echo. There, no. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there. We're going to answer that question. But before I do that, um, I'm going to direct you very quickly. So for the next minute or so, if you want to leave now, you can. Because I'm going to tell you about the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation, which is my real animator training library. If you click on ambanimation.com, <coughs> click on join the real animator training library, <coughs> You will be taken to this page with tons of information for you to go through. A video for you to watch. Loads of videos for you to watch, actually, telling you about why this place is so good. Most of you know that. If you've been watching my streams for a long enough time, you'll be seeing videos. You'll be seeing Travis's little film and everything and people who've been through the library here. You have two options. You've got training archives and edutainment archives. Edutainment is something for everyone uh for the people it can be used but like octavio to consolidate what you've learned in training or it can be just you know for people who love watching great demos of animation and tips and tricks and want to just play themselves and and uh garner whatever info from me they can that way Training is the serious stuff, okay? And if you're going to go through that, if we do develop the mentorship thing, you're going to have to have gone through basics, intermediate and advanced and possibly anatomy or at least show me in your drawings that you have some understanding of that before we're going to make a film, right? So you get the, the, this is the very important aspect of real animator training, step-by-step -step archives that teach you the things that you really need to know uh, in you know dedicated archives for basics you move on to intermediate you do your anatomy you can do these pick up and play subsidiary lectures to consolidate all the things you're learning by watching these demos that i give here specifically in a professional manner not in a uh not in a fun live manner which we do in other streams um and the advanced archive which is your refining and finishing archive um so that's where you can get bundles. You just read those. You can find out about the bundles. Edutainment Here's is someone who joined. Edutainment is pretty much, you know, animation sessions, drawing sessions, ask the animator, animation breakdowns. And what you saw Davio is using uh, to make his own film, the how to animate your own film, where you watch me animate a uh, very high level, two minutes worth of very high level animation over 56 live streams. Uh, so you watch me make that film from start to finish. So go over to Real Animator Training and transform your lives. It is the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. Need I remind you that get people from CalArts, people from Full Sail, people from Bluth University, people who've worked at Disney, people who have worked at Cartoon Network, people who have learned from Richard Williams' son Alex at Pearson College in London. They have all joined this place. You have to ask yourself why. Um, when I tell you it's the world's best learning pl uh, resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation, that simply is the why. Okay, so that's that. Um, now I'm going to talk about Angela's um, uh, question because I think it's important that I answer, I answer that. that. So, so I'm going to answer it. Uh, since I'm just reading it, I can answer it while talking to you. And then I'm going to have a look at some of your comments in the chat and we'll call it a day. 
so angela says i need some advice i was offered a freelancer animation job okay but now here's the thing um call it a day uh i got that from david bowie uh outside researchers pierced all extremes of my senses call it a day call it a day needle boy blind by something god what was that song i can't remember it was a bowie outside song you probably got it from something else but yeah i do have a quite lyrical way of speaking because i memorize poems and memorize lyrics and yeah it's just something i like um, i need some advice i was offered a freelancer animation job the thing is with me being an intermediate should i try to do it okay we're going to take this question stages at a time but what rings the alarm bells here is what they want to do something short I'm, I, I wish you would have typed it a little bit clearer angela my plan is to storyboard it out they would they will go and fully hire me if they like the storyboards of course i will stage it out okay so what kind of job is it um here's the the thing is is there's nothing wrong with people offering you a job and asking you to prove yourself okay and many times a lot of those people take your ideas and say you're not good enough and use some of the things that you've done and that's how they make their film so they cheat you now that's the bad side the good side is is you got the feeling that you were doing a job and you got experience so you could moan and whatever but if you know what you're getting yourself into then that's something else so the thing is is we're not clear what kind of freelance job this is because you've said they will go and fully hire me if they like the storyboards so you're going to spend a lot of time storyboarding something now here's the thing somebody's offered you a job okay again i'm i'm very suspect about that you haven't been very clear and i can't help but have some kind of negative vibe about what kind of what their intentions are so maybe it's not the case but the information you've given me is kind of giving me that the case the thing is, is it's not all bad you may this is experience experience as long as you know what you're getting yourself into that's it a lot of people say well i a lot of people want money and quite frankly they ain't good enough for the money and then they bitch and they moan what does that mean they ain't got everybody's good enough for money but like you're prob th these people that want money for their animation are probably more efficient at sweeping the road and they can get money from doing that than their animation but they want the money for their animation and they bitch and whine and moan about it look they haven't learned they don't know enough and look, that r in the background stands for real okay real talk okay so everybody i i'm i'm never somebody that likes to play the victim or give pity or talk or, or encourage victim victim mentality okay we're all responsible we're all capable uh, unless you truly do have some uh, terrible defect body deficiency and then you can be even more amazing like stephen hawkins and 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 make me uh, you know just look like the an absolute buffoon intellectually wise okay so even somebody like that is not a victim you can look at him as one in some regards but then i think he did just fine right so when i talk when i talk i talk about what can you do constructively what can you do to succeed in what you say you want to do and the first thing is never be a victim because you're looking for help outside of yourself you're looking for pity you're looking for comfort from something rather than to solve the thing so why am i talking about that as long as you're aware of what you're getting yourself into so let's say these people are saying we'll only give you the job if we look at what you've done and we think you're good enough right there's a there's a potential there that they that they could be you know not having your best interests at heart which is 90 percent of people when they give people jobs um 
let's face it, they only want to use you because they can make money out of you, but at the same time they need you, so it's good for them to have your, your interests at heart. But a lot of people don't think that way, okay? You want, you want people to do good work for you, then treat them right. You want people to be, to, to be loyal, then treat them right. You want people to, to recommend you, then treat them right, right? But a lot, some people are just like, there are a lot of suckers out there, a lot of, lot of young artists out there that wish they were artists that they're not really, but they want to feel like them. So let's give them that feeling for peanuts or better still, let's pretend they'll get some money and then not give them any at the end. Okay. So there are people out there like that. Now, let's say that these people were like that. You could look at it as like, well, why am I going to do this? I know what I'm getting into, but I want, I feel like I want to have that experience of working with somebody and seeing what it's like to work to a brief and to a deadline and just, just go through that. Now, if you work with that person and they're, they don't know what they're doing and they keep messing you about and you're like, ah, I'm not learning anything from this person because they truly don't know what they want. And I know more about animation than them. Uh, so just leave say nah thanks but no thanks it was all crap anyway right you knew what you were getting into but the other thing is, is uh, let's say so you first said the thing is with me being offered the job and i'm an intermediate should i try to do it i ain't the boss of you and no one's the boss of you if you want to try to do it you should try to do it regardless but you should know and be aware of what you're getting yourself into you you know and you know that you're true in in here you know what your work is okay now once you know what your work is and you still want to do it then you should if you feel that your work isn't quite good enough as certain people around you but you feel that like i could do what they're asking then you should do it right doesn't matter whether you're an intermediate. Most people who are intermediate real animators are better than graduates. I mean, there are people who... Mage Burger is an intermediate in my course. Uh, and he animates better than people doing 2D puppet in the industry today. So intermediate real animator is different to, to what a lot of these people expect. You know, even the basic walk cycles in my arch archive, they're way beyond the Richard Williams just up and down basics, right? We give you pelvic tilt and, and figure of eights and all that at the get-go, at the very start. Okay, so real animator is already a uh, cut above. But you, Angela, have, have I believe you personally? I believe you've got some drawing issues that you need to sort out. But that's not for that, that, that's not for me to tell you that you shouldn't go for this if you feel you if you feel you can do it. It's not for me to tell you what to do. If you have an opportunity. And you want to, you should take that opportunity as long as you're aware of what you're getting into, right? Just be aware of what you're getting into. So the thing of should I try to do it, you you should go with your gut and go with your heart. Okay? Don't go with your head. If your heart says I really want to do it, and your gut says I really want to do it, and your head is like, well, that AMB guy, he's got he knows what he's talking about, and he's got all these courses and he has very high standards and I can't really that's your head talking telling your heart and your gut no your heart and your gut win okay just do it because there's a time you know it's not going to be the last thing it's not going to be it's not a massive company it's not going to make or break your career which hasn't even started yet so just do it if you want to do it right no one's the boss of you but you right so then you go um my plan is to storyboard it out. They'll go with the storyboards and fully hire me. Of course, I will stage it out. Look, if that's your plan, you've already... Look, that's good because you're already planning about how you're going to do it. So you should do it. And that's what you're going to do. It seems like you're fully aware of what's going on. They'll, If they go with my storyboards, um, they will hire me. So give it a shot. No, about, about, about like what real animator training is 
is training you to be an elite animator, a real animator. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be. When people used to look, I always associate my animation training with martial arts because I used to train people in martial arts and I used to study train in martial arts myself. Look, we even had white belts entering tournaments. We had yellow belts. We had people who had just started entering tournaments. You can see you're not ready to enter the tournament. It's an experience. They're training. They'll come back to their training. They'll keep training if they want to win and if they want to be better. But you got it's like the dry land swimming thing, right? You can you can train on dry land about the various strokes. You can tell I'm not a swimmer, right? You can train on dry land about the various strokes. Um, but until you jump in the water, you ain't going to know what it's like. It's like so many people talk a great fight. If he comes, if he punches me there, I will move his arm. I'll grab his arm. I'll strike his bicep. And that'll leave the opportunity to put my elbow. Then I'll back fist. I'll strike him. I'll grab the back of his neck. I'll turn him around. Okay. Go and try it out on the guy. that. Go and piss someone off in a nightclub or somewhere and see what happens. <laughs> You've got to experience things. You've got to experience things. So it's not... I haven't completed my training. Here's a secret for you. Training will never be complete. Maybe you'll finish the archives and the exercises in real animator training, but you'll be so good by then that you'll be training yourself in whatever you feel. Just like I've got this little book here that I'm... You all know I give you routine demonstrations and show off how much anatomy I know but I'm still training the anatomy right I'm still training the anatomy I'm still training I'm still training the hand-eye coordination drawings right still training myself to draw better right? training never stops all right whether you take the job whether you don't take the job whatever you do it's experience and if it's something you really want to do and the heart says yes do it the, i said no one's the boss of you right i said no one's the boss of you Actually, there is the boss of you. This thing. Right? A lot of people think. They think they think for starters, but they don't think. Right? A lot of people believe they think. And a lot of people believe that they know. Right? But they don't realize just how easily manipulated even the most of intelligence, intelligent of us are through simple brain waves that like to follow loops and sounds and patterns and repetitive repetitive things that make the body follow it all right this guy he knows better all right this guy is good but this guy is the servant of this guy you reverse the roles right make this the servant Let's just say misery, right? Misery. The thing is, is then people say, well, you're all about learning and repeating the boring things and studying anatomy. Our heart wants us to draw anime. Yeah, okay. But your heart wants you to draw anime, but you're not happy with your anime. You know, if you, if you really want to draw it, then you'll do what needs to be done, all right? that's where this guy comes in I can help right 
Um, how important is proper anatomy to animation? Is that even a question? Okay, it's not important at all to a digital puppeteer. Uh, maybe to a three-dimensional digital puppeteer, slightly important. Very important to a puppet builder and a puppet rigger. But to a real animator, you don't have anatomy. You may as well put this down and do something else. That's my view. Or you just make a mess and be happy making mess. Do you prefer the blue style? I can't, don't say I prefer it. I love it, but I don't prefer it. Um, it's like, do I prefer Secret of Nim to Spirited Away? Heck yes. Do I prefer the Pebble and the Penguin to Spirited Away? No way. Not even close. Maybe some animation in Pebble and the Penguin might be a little bit nicer here and there, but the Pebble and the Penguin is inferior in every way, more or less, except for character animation uh, to Spirited Away. And I, I probably would struggle going through that film. So, no, I tend to lean towards the blue style of drawing, but I don't necessarily prefer it all the time. Um, it's about context. Um, I think my issue is that I put too much of time and pressure on myself and stretch myself too thin. Yeah, well, there you go. Time and pressure. Time is an illusion and pressure can be relieved. Okay? By taking away the illusion. The thing is, is the when and the how is always the tripping up of people. You're so worried about when and you're so worried about how that you're missing what you need to know right now. When this thing comes into your hands and you're able to do all these amazing things on it, or well, somebody says, congratulations, you have won an iPhone 13, quick. So, you know, um, when do you say, I wonder how it works? Maybe if you're a tech head and you know it already and you're interested, okay, most of us are like, no, I'll just trust it and I'll use it. Amazing device. You don't wor worry about how. You don't worry when it's going to work when it's going to happen you know you, you you got a rough idea of the battery you glance at the battery that's how much power i've got left right but the thing is, is when it comes to your drawing or your animation it's like when and how how and when look there are a few rules you follow the rules right that's how that's all there is to it. So then the when comes into play. But when, 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 when. I don't see how because because when I look at what I've done now and I look at that, I, I don't know it's going to take too long. When, when will I get it right? When will it happen for me? I see this happen for somebody else. I don't know how it happened for them. They're shit. I'm better than them. But, 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 but it hasn't happened for me. How and when. What happens when it becomes about the when and the how, it becomes less about what you're doing right now. So my advice is, immerse yourself with the process. Fall in love with the process. The when and the how are a side effect. How did you become so great? I don't know, because I was too busy looking good. You arrogant son of a SOB. Well, that's the truth. You know, everything I did, I was looking for the good in everything I was doing. I was looking for the good in everything I was doing because I know that that made me feel better and I enjoyed it. And when I was feeling better doing it, I knew I w that's what it's all about. Everything in life is a feeling. 
You take the feelings out of things. Why do you even think? People say you need to think. No, don't think, feel. You take the feeling out of things, then what's the point of thinking? You're doing it for a feeling. Why are you thinking? Why is anything in this? You take feelings out of it. There's no point. Right? But when the feeling becomes when and how and shitty and, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it'll ever happen. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Poor little me. That's how you're going to live. Then, you know, that's all the... What happens is, is that becomes a, a wave in your brain, a thought pattern, and that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you attract more and more of when and how. You attract more of somebody else's drawings. Oh, their drawings are so much better than mine. When am, when, when am I going to get it right? How? Even though I'm following something that's given me really good progress, because I, because I don't know when, because that person's work is so good, now, now I'm going to screw everything up about the progress I did because I'm worrying about... Because it doesn't feel nice. When and how for me? Or somebody else's work is good. Five, 56,000 likes. A million subscribers. How? It's so bad. My work is so much better than theirs. Why? When? When for me? Well, the brain wave starts going more and more like that, and it's only looking for that to feed that. And that's where your thoughts, that's where your motivation, that's where it all lies. That's why I say you've got to listen to this guy. This guy is like, I want to do that because I like doing that. I can see myself doing that and I feel really good when I do that. When I'm drawing, when I'm drawing and I'm designing, in Charlene's case, I'm doing character designs of my own daughter. I'm, I'm, I'm making a, I love my daughter so much. It makes me so happy to draw her. It makes me so happy to turn her into a character design and share her with the rest of the world. This is what I do with my wife, by the way. See that on the wall there? And share that with the rest of the world. I love it. It puts me on a high. It makes me feel good. And then you start radiating that. What else can I do? What else what, what else can I do to what else can I share with the rest of the world? You're sharing that and then you see you look at your Instagram and then the rest of the world don't want to know. You say, Don't care when, don't care how. The only thing that matters is how I feel right now. And right now, I feel great. So let's keep on doing this. Let's put that away. And let's just keep working. Because when I work... Ah, oh, you know what? I did such a great drawing of my great one last night. Really feels like I've captured the character. Really feels like, you know, the guy's, the guy's insane. And he'll go from perfectly normal to completely insane within the blink of an eye and i feel i really caught something with the drawing i did yesterday let's see what people on instagram thought of it 50 likes okay well maybe maybe maybe, maybe they'll see what i see some other time i'm feel so good about that drawing i did yesterday i'm gonna build on it today and already i'm smiling because it's involuntary that smile right can see my face in the camera I don't like to smile because I got a baby tooth because I got punched in the mouth and my adult anyway some other time so the thing is um, if you're smiling you feel good you're doing what you like just ignore all that shit you can switch your brain waves and all of that anytime and then sooner or later, the when and the how, they stop having that kind of um, power over you that make you 
that paralyze you from getting anywhere. They paralyze your progress. That's what it does. It paralyzes your progress. You know? Pain. What you want to do is you want to be at peace. You make peace by understanding the when and the how or not at the forefront of what you're doing. Right? Urgency, urgency. That urgency is due to like the illusion of time. Right? You could have started something a year ago, you could have started something five years ago. But the thing is, is if you don't have the right attitude, it doesn't matter. The attitude, it's like five years of pain or one year of pain. Five years of peace or one year of peace depends five minutes of peace versus five years of pain, right? It all starts to happen when you start to have the right attitude about what you're doing why are you doing it right and maybe have an idea of when you're gonna get it but you gotta care about the when and the how but just not right now okay you're gonna pro procrastinate about anything let it be the when and the how it's important I'm not gonna you know I've downplayed it a lot to get my point across but that's the thing to procrastinate when and how um of course there has to be a system that you're following that works you know i'm talking about this in context if you're doing real animator training okay i'm talking to people that are following my system or if you're learning from somebody else who knows what they're talking about and has proven credibility and experience and isn't a career instructor okay a career instructor well okay it's like a dry person who dry land swimming I'm gonna teach you how to fight Have you ever had a fight in real life no but I got a black belt okay well, maybe you can teach me about how to kick nice high kicks and how to stretch and how to how to get fit but you're not gonna teach me how to fight you can teach me some nice choreography and some nice theories, but that's not going to teach me how to fight. There's a difference. So it's the same thing with this animation and drawing. How much animate? Let's see your animation. Let's see what you know. Who have you worked for? What have you done? What's your level of experience? Okay, so the how is important. But it's, it's like the first door. That's how. Once you've got your how, the wind starts niggling at you. Making it seem so much more um, painful than what it has to be. Okay. Um... Cameron's off. Okay, that was when we were talking about the Octavio's work. I'm just scrolling up. Yes, uh, Selena, I'm looking forward to your uh, dialogue test. And you know I'm always here, right? So... You don't need to post a big finish thing. You can post your ideas and suggestions. It's up to you. Uh, um, okay, there we go. So I'm glad I spent that time on Charlene's when and how. Uh, batch tunes, very quickly. You asked me a question about cleanup. On my video, on, on my video series on my YouTube channel where I give Aaron AOX a cleanup job, there is a comment, okay, by a professional cleanup artist from Disney, okay? These are the kind of people that watch my videos, okay? And he's really happy with the way I instructed Aaron and, and what I was talking about it. And he gives a big, big, big talk about in the comments section 
about uh, rates and clean up and things like that. Now, you got to understand that you're not Disney and you don't have the, the kind of budget, but that'll give you an idea. Better than me because he's a seasoned pro. So I'm going to save you a lot of time because before I would reply to you, I would go and read what he said because, quite frankly, I've never worked as a clean. I've cleaned up my own work and been paid for it, but I've never run a company to, to hire cleanup artists or whatever, so I would have to do a little bit of prior research. I have a vague idea of how many per, per 16 frames it used to be called per foot or per second now. But the thing is, is... Um, uh, different countries, different rates, whatever. So you live in the States, he lives in the States. Go to that YouTube video. There are about three different videos of mine where I'm talking to Aaron AOX. You'll have to do some ground, some digging, read the comments sections. I don't get that many comments, so it's not going to be a mammoth task for you. So go and look for over those videos for the cleanup guys feedback in those how to be a cleanup artist videos or whatever in my video uh, videos category on my channel. That should help you out with that. Okay, so that is that. We have come to the end of the chat. We have come to the end of the live stream. I will see you all on the next live stream. We'll be looking to finish that Naruto uh, thing. It was a pleasure to look at your work. It was a pleasure to uh, share some advice with those who was um, looking for it. Um, I look forward to the next. Hey, Max Power, how are you? I look forward to the next live stream, Alpha Proto, and I will see you all then. Um, see you later. And remember, keep it real. Bye-bye.